Hey there guys, my name is Steven Davidian and we are going to be covering the course curriculum for best practices for sculpting game assets in Blender. So I'm going to be going over actually a couple of the things that we'll be going into in this session. So I broke it up into five sessions. Uh, the first session we're going to be going over is setting up Blender in the workspace. So just going over basic things and within that session we'll actually be sculpting a cute little creature uh, within like 10 to 15 minutes. The second session we're going to be going over character anatomy and the best way to go over that is actually to delve into it and actually start sculpting a character. Um, the third session we're going to continue on from the second session, continue sculpting the character. Um, the fourth session, after doing those uh, block off and minor details, we're going to be going into a little more detail, finishing them off, smoothing the mesh, making them look clean. Um, session 5 will be doing something totally different than character anatomy. We're going to be going into clothes. So I'm going to be just showing you what we uh, will make within these sessions. So we're going to start off by making this little creature uh, from the start. And it's just something really quick to show you what brushes we can use with Blender and stuff. It's nothing, um, nothing crazy. And then we're going to go on to making these two characters. And after we make one character, what we're going to be doing is actually using the grab brush uh, and start moving around some of the um, features of the old character and make a totally different styled character um, just by using the grab brush. So after we uh, basically block off these base meshes, we're going to have two, one semi-realistic and one kind of stylized mesh. And then the third one, we're just going to create this simple cloth shirt. Um, just by going into Blender and using the crease brush and the clay strip brush and that's basically it. If you guys are looking to kind of sculpt within Blender, uh, if you don't really want to buy ZBrush and you, you want to do everything within one software, this tutorial series will be for you. I hope to see you guys in session one and I hope you guys have a good one. Hey there guys, my name is Steven Vidian and today we're going to be starting session one of our best practices of sculpting game assets within Blender. So I've been working in Blender for quite some time now, around four years, and um, sculpting in it has gotten progressively better each and every year. New features have been added and it's honestly very, very fun and it's, to be honest, it's not on the level of ZBrush, but it's a great competitor, um, uh, especially taking into account that it's free. You, there's no buy-in, there's no nothing you have to do. You just go in and you can start working within the software for absolutely free. The only thing I would recommend is getting some sort of pen tab to use just because sculpting is um, typically way easier when you have something to um, physically draw on like a tablet opposed to kind of um, just free roaming it with the mouse. It's kind of harder to get, you know, finite detail and stuff like that. So. We're going to start this off by, let me take all of this off and let's enter a cube. So this is how your scene should kind of look right when you um, open up Blender. So it should look something like this. You should have a cube, um, except you should have a camera and a light there also. So what we're going to be going over is actually um, just the basics of how to get started uh, with Blender and what we want to do to get started with the sculpting part of it. So the first thing I would say is... Um, if you do have a tablet, what you want to do is come into File, User Preferences, go to Input, and emulate three button mouse. And the reason why you want to emulate three button mouse is because um, without it, you're not going to be able to use certain things like pan around uh, with Alt and Shift and Control. It's just it's a lot easier when you're using a tablet because you don't have to kind of um, go off your uh, your go off your tablet to hold your mouse. You can do it all in one place. So if I hit Alt, I can rotate around. If I hit Alt and Shift, I can pan. And Alt and Control zoom in and out. Just by sliding my pen on my tablet. So Alt, go around. Alt, Shift, pan. And Alt, Control, in and out. So if I want to come around my mesh, you know, do work here, go here and do some work there and I can pan over to here. You know, you can work very fast uh, with this kind of um, workflow. So the next thing I want to do is take this cube out and probably put in some sort of UV sphere. I like sculpting on a sphere um, as my basis, especially with heads and such. Like all of these heads were originated on a UV sphere. Um, 
at first. And these are not done whatsoever. These are just um, two-hour sculpts. But they were originated on a UV sphere, and um, I kind of just built up, built up, built up. And that's kind of what I, uh, I want to be able to show you guys how to do um, is create your own, you know, style of sculpting and be able to kind of see something and, you know, stylize it and stuff like that. That's kind of what's the point of this video. I want to show you all the practices and all the knowledge and the trial and errors that I've done uh, myself and kind of show you the easiest and most effective workflow about going about it. So obviously doing a head is not the easiest thing to do, but um, um, it's not the best thing to do when you start off, but we're gonna just go about it, just like, you know, breaking it up into basic shapes and I'll be showing you guys all the reference and stuff like that. But in this video, we're gonna be staying to the core and just learning brushes and patterns to use when we're sculpting. So I'm gonna hit N on my keyboard. I'm gonna pull up this side panel right here. In the um, shading panel, I'm gonna turn on matte cap. I'm gonna pick this matte red color. I like it, this is personal preference. It looks better on the eyes for me. Uh, when I'm sculpting, I just like it better, just like that. You can use this clayish kind of color. You can keep the gray. It really depends. You can choose you know, almost anything. They have shiny, they have normal matte color, they have like a bronzish gold. Um, matte silver. I just like this matte red. It looks the nicest to me. And then also, um, I turn on ambient inclusion, just to create that you know effect of shadows. So it gives depth to your sculpt. Okay, so to get into it, uh, I would say we would just jump into go into object mode and sculpt mode. Okay, you can hit N to take that panel off. We don't need that panel anymore. So to our left, we have our brushes over here. You know, if you click on it, you can see these are all the basic blender brushes. These are the default brushes. There's no, you know, additional brushes to use. There's no brush pack that you need to buy. You can do whatever you want with these um, brushes. And typically any brush pack that you find is just an alter of these brushes. Okay, so uh, let's take the sculpt brush. And now I'm gonna start sculpting on my mesh. So I'll start drawing and you can see, uh, you can see it's, it's stretching a lot. You know, you don't really get good topology at all. Like this is not how sculpting's supposed to be. And the reason why it's stretching a lot is just because we don't have enough vertices on our mesh to actually do anything. Uh, you know, we can't kind of deform it if there's no vertices and polygons to do that with. So. That is why it's looking like this and everything's getting stretched ridiculously. Now there's two ways to kind of get, get, get like around that and get rid of that. Let me control Z back to our sphere. So what you could do is just subdivide it um, off the bat. So you click W and you can subdivide it. Uh, and you can probably do it again, you can subdivide it again. And now if we go into sculpt mode, you can see when you, when you draw on it, you can see it's a lot smoother and then you can smooth it out and, you know, start drawing in shapes and such. And you can kind of start, you know, your sculpting process. But at a certain point, you know, see if I pull out the nose, at a certain point, I need more detail, you know. Now I can't really do nothing to the nose. It's, it's too pulled out. So I need something to kind of keep adding detail to my mesh. Now I'm going to show you how we can do that. Okay. Let me go down here. We don't want that many subdivisions. If we go back into sculpt mode and we click on Dino Topo. So this is Dino Dynamic Topology, which it allows you to alter your mesh depending on, so I think it would be on 12 right now. I think it starts off on 12. So it allows you to, um, it allows you to, as you're sculpting on your mesh, create topology as you're sculpting. So you're creating geometry. So this is our geometry right here. Now if I sculpt right along this, you can see it created this geometry um, on this line. And this is how you can kind of work um, and not really worry about you know, subdividing over and over and over again. So this is how I usually start off all my sculpts. I kind of start off by um, turning on dyno uh, topology and sculpting and then I get the basis of what I want. Then what I would do is take that base, um, retopologize it, which we're not gonna be doing in this video. I already have a retopologized course on my um, live video page, so you can go check that out if you wanna learn how to retopologize your sculpts. 
I would retopologize it, right? And then I would take this. So let's just say hypothetically, this is a retopologized mesh. I would take this because um, you can see dyno topology destroys your topology. It's very hard to UV this. It's very hard to get, you know, really good detail in because the topology is all messed up and wacky. It's all triangles. It's not smooth. There's not a good edge flow. So uh, let's delete that and add a sphere so you can see the edge flow on here is way nicer you know if you wanted to add finite details um, it would be so much easier to do it on an edge flow like this so let's just say hypothetically this was the retopo version of what we just created i would come into our modifier panel and i would add a multi-resolution modifier and i would subdivide it probably three times and you can see um you can see how much how much smoother it got, you know, just by subdividing it that many times. And if we go to sculpt mode, um, if I come into here, you can see how I can I can create you know cleaner lines and such, just because the topology is good. And I would do this, I would probably keep subdividing it up. And you can go, so you can see these lines I'm creating are very sharp and clean. If you want to create maybe like wrinkles or something, I would probably keep on subdividing um, this upwards probably. Uh, but if say, you know, you don't have the fastest computer and you don't want to work on something that's this heavy, um, you can change the sculpt preview down to, you know, a lower, a lower edge. And then, you know, you can work on this. And then as you go up, you can see that creation that you made um, is put into that. So. Multi-res uh, resolution modifier is very, very helpful for creating those finishing touches. But to do your base sculpt, I would say we would stay in dyno topology. We wouldn't really add too much more detail um, and just create our silhouette of our mesh. So um, if you see our detail size, you can see it says 12. Um, now what that is, is um, so if I draw on here, it's creating, the higher the number, the less polygons it's creating. Uh, the lower the number, the more dense it will be. So you can see over here, I'm creating more polygons in this area now, because I have a lower number. If I come down to like a two, which is very, very low, you can see over here that I, it's like a black hole. There's so many polygons were created here. Now I wouldn't advise you to go that low Unless you're doing, you know, some detail work or something like that. I usually stay around 12 to 5. Um, start around 10 to 12 and then I go down to around 8 to get some secondary forms in. And then I go down to around 5 to, you know, get some minor details in. But uh, typically you don't want to go to, to 2, you know. That's not something you would want to do. So underneath here, you have three a panel that's detail ref, uh, refine method. So... I usually turn this to subdivide edges and I'll show you the difference between subdivide collapse which is the preset and then subdivide edges which I do. So subdivide collapse allows you to um, draw on, so if I'm drawing here, right, sculpting, I, can, I don't know why I keep saying drawing, if I'm sculpting here, um, you can see the closer I get the more detail, you know, that I, I'll be able to draw. So you can see, and if I zoom out and I try to draw something, you see all my detail gets shattered. You know, if I zoom out here and I try sculpting, all my detail is getting collapsed and shattered, just like that. But if I come in, you can see the refinement. I can create refined detail. And if I come out, it goes away. When I choose subdivide edges, you know, if I create this fine detail right here, right? And, you know, let's just say we start mapping out eyes and then, you know, a nose. If I come over here and I, you know, I put some spots here, maybe I scale my brush down and, you know, I start creating some cheekbones. It's still there. It doesn't get vanished at all. And that's why I basically, without going into like um, plain detail, like, I mean, specific details, that's kind of why I have that checked on. Just because if you're sculpting at different angles and you want to come here and, you know, kind of sculpt at a farther angle like this, it's much easier to do it with. Um, subdivide edges opposed to subdivide collapse relative detail just keep that as is smooth shaded um, that's basically simple you can tell we're working on a flat shaded mesh right now when you smooth shade it typically it looks like how it's gonna look um, as it's finished unless you're doing a flat shaded model 
uh, which I don't know why you'd be sculpting for. But um, I usually don't work with smooth shaded on till probably the silhouette's finished because I like sculpting more on the flat shaded. I, I feel like I see the detail a little more. But once I start getting into like details and such, I I definitely turn on smooth shaded to see, you know, get those fine lines and things like that. Okay. Another thing is you can tell the grid um, is getting in the way a lot. And to turn that off, you just go to um, display, grid, uncheck it, and uncheck X and Y. And you can turn that off. Okay, so now we're going, we're just going over the basic dyno topology. Um, symmetrize, symmetrize, is that how you, symmetry? I don't know how to say that word, but basically symmetry. What that's going to be able to do is show you, so say I have symmetry toggled off, right? Um, I take that off. I can change the direction too. If I click this button, um, okay, see, let me change that. So we need that positive X and negative X. So if I click this button, you can see it copied whatever I did uh, on this side to that side. And you know, if, it's gonna make it completely symmetrical though. So keep that in mind. You know, if you don't want something to be symmetrical, don't use that button. But that works for anything. You know, if even if it's on the X axis, uh, the Y axis or the Z axis, um, you know, you can click this and it'll pop it up on the other side. But like I said, it's gonna do it to the whole mesh. So if there's something over here that is specific for this side and you don't want it on that side, it's gonna pop up. Uh, when you do it. So if I, you know, if I do it again, you can tell it got rid of that. Okay, um, symmetry, obviously, you know, if you want it sym uh, symmetrical on the x-axis, whatever comes here goes there. On the y-axis, whatever I draw here, symmetrical on the y, and then on the z, I want to uncheck those. On the z, whatever I draw on the top is kind of on the bottom. So if I draw up there, you can see it's up there. Typically, I stay with the x-axis. It works the best for me. But, um, you know, if you're doing maybe a unique sculpt and you need something like maybe an alien or an animal and you need it on the y-axis or something or the z-axis, um, it can help like that. Let's create a new UV sphere just because that one's getting a little rough. Uh, let's turn on dyno topology. And everything's good. So, um... So we have symmetry, uh, we understand that, we understand what dyno topology is, which is the most important thing. Um, you have your curve, uh, we'll, we'll go over that after we get into brushes. You have your stroke tool, uh, we're not gonna get into that. And then texture, what texture allows you to do is bring in alphas um, from you know, you know, a software and then use it as a brush essentially. And you can texture on these different alphas, maybe of cuts, creases, cracks, stuff like that. And that works uh, really good on um, multi-resolution modifier just because like I was saying, the topology is great uh, when you're using a multi-resolution modifier because it's subdividing it upwards. So you're working down to up and it's great. So you, if you want to you say use a wrinkles for the texture, if you bring in maybe a wrinkle alpha or maybe a scar alpha and then try to you know use it, it would look really good on the multi-resolution of the detail will kind of show. So we're gonna go over the brushes now. Um, I'm gonna be frank with you and honest. You're typically, uh, in most scenarios, uh, you will use all of these in, in individual scenarios, uh, but in most scenarios, I'm gonna go over the most common brushes that you're gonna be able to use. So the clay strips, I will use this brush 99% of the time. I use this brush a lot. Uh, in culmination with the grab brush, this is probably my most used brush. I build up masses with this. Um, I do detail with this. I kind of do everything with this. Um, it's the brush, like I said, I use the most. You know, if I want to come in here and and you know push in some eyes, um, I can do that. You know, if I want to like smooth this out and get like a nose coming in, and then you know, obviously this is not how you do a face, but you know, you could get in very fast detail in um, in a short amount of time. So. Um, another thing before I jump ahead is, so when you're coming down with this clay strips brush, 
you can see it has this um, clay effect, like it's a build-up effect. Okay. Okay. It has a clay effect. It's building up on top of each other, right? Now, if I want to go inwards, if I want to invert this brush's action, all I have to do is hit Control and do my stroke. And you can see now it's pushing inwards. You see that? So that goes with any single brush you use. Uh, if you hold Control, it's going to do the inverted reaction, the opposite reaction of whatever it does. Okay? Now, instead of coming over here and going to smooth, right? Um, all you would have to do with any brush in Blender, any brush you're using, all you would have to do is hit Shift and smooth it. As you hold Shift on any brush, it's going to smooth out your object. So it's kind of like a hotkey, essentially. So I don't think I've clicked on the Shift brush one time in my life. I usually just, I mean the smooth brush one time in my life. I just use Shift. <laughs> so, okay, so that's the clay strips. It's very good for, you know, building up quick uh, masses and stuff like that. And even later on, maybe doing some finite detail and stuff like that. So just a really good brush, you know. You can get very good buildup with it. So, okay. The crease brush, essentially you're just creating a crease, you know. So if you go down, you can create a crease in between two objects. And this is a brush I use a lot, like I said, also for detail um, later on. And I do use the opposite effect on it by holding control and it kind of pulls out these these edges right here so it kind of pulls out these edges to make them kind of pointed uh, and I use that a lot to maybe create contrast in between things that are going downwards and upwards and for hard surface modeling it's nice to create a, a edge that's sharp and you can use this in culmination with the pinch brush but I'm not gonna jump over there I'll kind of show you after so, you know, you can use a crease brush to push in and crease things, maybe for clothes and folds, maybe maybe muscle separation. And then you can use the inverted reaction for, you know, hard surface modeling, create stylized looks, um, some anatomy in the face, like maybe sharp edges on the nose and things like that. You can do a lot of things with it. Okay, so that's the crease brush. Um, I do use a flatten a little, but instead of that, I, I typically use a scrape, a scrape brush. But you know, the flatten just basically flattens the surface. So if, you know, I come over here and I flatten it. It essentially flattens the surface, just like that. You know, if you keep going down on it and doing stuff like this, it's gonna flatten it out. So if you want to get a nice, clean, flat look, that's kind of what you have to do with with this brush. Um, the grab brush, really, really helpful. Uh, you know, you can move things around. Now, one thing I would say to do with this is you got to edit this brush kind of off the bat. Because let's say I want to move this face outwards, so this way. Uh, if I pull out, you can see, whoa, it did way too much. Uh, I don't want that at all. That's too much. Like, the power of it is way too much. It grabs way too many um, vertices and pulls it out at a strength that I don't feel comfortable with and I don't like, it's very ugly. So what I would do is I would go into strength and it's at 1.0 right now. I would change that to around 0.1, you know, or 0.2. And now when I pull out, you can see I can get a much nicer effect. So I gotta do a lot more to pull it out, but you know, I have so much more control when I am pulling it out. Just like that. And then like I said, the inverted reaction, I don't use it a lot, but you know, you can do control and push things in like that which I don't know why you would use but I'm sure people do use that okay so the grab brush inflate brush it's essentially just inflates a point just like that if you draw on it and inflates it this brush I don't really use that much to be honest the layer brush I don't really use either um, the mask I use a lot this is a brush that you're gonna be using a lot um, you 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 draw on it right and if you hit control, it, it erases the mask, so it inverts the option. So say uh, we want, say this is a face of a character, right? And we want to kind of shape in his eyes. So I'd mask out where I would want his eyes to be, right? And so essentially everything around this, I can draw on. So, you know, I can draw and sculpt on everything around this. But if I want to sculpt in there, what I have to do is invert the mask. And how I can do that is just hit Control-I. 
that allows me to invert it. Now I can use a brush and start sculpting this inwards to create, you know, that loop of the eye, that ridge of the eye. And then to get rid of this to kind of see it, all you have to do is click Alt M. And you can see now we created a, you know, an eye hole very fast and very easily. So just the mask school, you can use that with a lot of things. And I, I, I use it with the lips. I use it with muscle separation. I use it to, you know, change big parts of my mesh. Like if I want to move a part of my mesh, but keep a piece set in stone, um, I use it like that because, um, say I want to move this back piece, right? If I wanted to move it upwards, if I use a grab tool, and I move it, it moves everything. But if I come over here and, you know, say I start masking out. Now you would want to do this, you know, very, very um, slowly and methodically because right now, I'm, you know, I'm getting part of the mask on parts I don't want. But if I mask all of this out now, just by using my pen tab and drawing around now, you can get in here and like I said, clean up this mask a lot. If you hold shift, it blurs the mask. So it gives it a nice gradient. So it's not 100% affected on certain things, but you know, roughly going in here. So if I want to move this, this back piece, I would just do control I and I would hit G and now only this back piece when I move gets affected. So, you know, if I want to move it up, now I can move this piece up. Now you will get some stretching over uh, under here, but you would just obviously have to fix that as you as you go along. So if I hit Alt M, you can see, you know, I'm gonna smooth that down there. I can smooth that up here and start smoothing this down. Just like that. So I move that entire piece, which would be very, very hard to do otherwise, just easily with the mask brush. The nudge brush I don't use, the pinch I use a lot. Um, what pinch basically does is it's self-explanatory. It pinches vertices together. So it creates a very, very sharp, uh, crisp line. So you can see if I'm coming down this crease that we made, and you can see as I pinch it, this sharp line that we're creating. It's a very sharp line. If I do it on this edge, you'll find it too. And I'll push vertices together to create, you know, a very hard ridge. And this is good for hard surface sculpting. Um, and anything you need that like an absolute crisp sharp line for um, Which mainly is in hard surface sculpting um, It's good for this the flatten brush the crease brush the scrape brush. Those are all good for um, hard surface Sculpting which I'm not the best at um, I would love to get into it a little more But I, I typically stay around more human anatomy and characters and stuff like that but um I've definitely dabbled into it a lot. So that's what the pinch brush basically does. Rotate brush, I don't really use this a lot, but it rotates your mesh. You can see on different axes and different angles. You would probably want to change the strength down to something lower. So if you want to kind of move this in, that you could, but I, I don't really use that one a lot at all. So I wouldn't really advise that one. The scrape brush I use quite often. And this gives you a very cool like scrape flatten effect. And what I do with this one is I change the curve. So I change how the brush is getting affected um, and how it's going onto the mesh. And I create a flat curve, kind of like a replica of the flat brush, but it gives a nicer effect. And it's a very harsh, basically like it's scraping. So if I come around here and you can see as I'm coming around, it's, it's scraping all this geometry off creating a nice clean flat um, edge all the way around and you can kind of you have to be careful with it because you can kind of decimate forms uh, very quickly with this you can see right here even if I go around the outer edge of the eye and stuff like that um, you know you can decimate forms very very fast and I typically, I work only with um, the curve on the flat edge. So right here, I only work it with it on this flat edge like that. Oh, this is on pinch. Sorry, I hit P by accident. Uh, let me go back to pinch and change that curve to that. And then let me go back to scrape. Oh no, I am on scrape, excuse me. I'm getting all my brushes wrong today. <laughs> So I can scrape over here, and I only use it when it's on that flattened curve. 
Okay, Sculpt Draw. Uh, basically one of probably the most used brush by most people. Just basically you can build up form very quickly with it. Uh, push down. I usually use this to push down things. So like maybe like the eyes, I would push it down because it pushes down much stronger. I just don't like it with, when I'm working just because I build up form slowly and this builds up a little too fast for me. So I don't really like working with it on. Okay. Um, the smooth brush, obviously a snake hook brush, basically it pulls out things um, like this. So if you want to create horns, it's very good for horns. Um, you know, hair, I guess, like maybe like cool styled hair, but I usually use uh, models and meshes to create my hair. Uh, but you can create these cool forms and you can pull out these forms just like so and do things like that with it, you know. It's a very uh, uh, used tool, you know. You can obviously change the strength down and, you know, use it in different ways and forms to, you know, create maybe like little beads on this guy's face if he's like an alien. Maybe like little beads on his eyes. It's kind of almost like a alternative to the grab brush in a different way though. And that is basically all the brushes that I use. Now I'm going to delete this and we're going to use them in practicality now. So we're going to create a, a sphere and what we're going to do is let me grab a, a file right now. Give me one second. Um, alrighty. Okay, what we'll do is create a, uh, I don't have the reference file, so I think I have it off the top of my head though. So what we're gonna do is create a quick kind of alien. Uh, and you can just follow along me, uh, so we can do it very fast and very effectively. Now I will go and stop for everything I do, I'm going to explain everything. I'm not going to just go and ramble off with no explanation. I'll be explaining every kind of step I take, but I want to try to use all these brushes so I can show you the practicality of them opposed to just showing you what they do. Okay, first off, I'm going to turn on Dino Topology. I'm going to turn on front faces only. So I'm only affecting the faces that are uh, with the normal sticking outwards. I'm not going to affect the faces that are pushed inwards. So these faces that are inside of these polygons, I'm not affecting those faces. Okay, I'm going to go to grab. And now I'm going to start mapping out kind of a, a face. Let me see if my symmetry is on. It is on. I'll hit one on my keyboard and I'll come to the side and I'll start pulling out um, this guy's chin. Okay, just like that. Um, all you're doing in this stage, I'll smooth it out just a little by hitting shift. All you're doing in this stage is you're creating shape. You know, you're not really doing anything else. You just want to create um, whatever character or machine or animal you're making. You just want to create general shape of it before you do anything. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm just trying to create general shape of him before I do anything. So. I'm looking at it from the side view. Now I'm going to come in the front. I'm going to start narrowing his head out because usually people's heads aren't perfect circles, spheres. So I'm going to start narrowing his head out, maybe moving some parts backwards. And if you do smooth out right now, you're going to see it destroys the mesh because there's not a lot of topology in it. And now I'm going to use a clay ships brush and I'm going to start packing on some topology. You know, I'm going to go around his head very roughly. Uh, like I said, don't, don't get attached to anything when you are working in these stages. Just, just focus on creating a silhouette. So if you don't know what a silhouette is, it's basically um, the shape of whatever you're creating without any detail. So a blacked out shape of what you're creating without any detail. And what that allows you to do is when you can create, so I'm gonna push this in by hitting control. I'm gonna start pushing eyes in for this guy, okay? But when you start creating um, art like that and your sculpts like that, you start, because you don't want to get into focusing on details and being, I don't want to come in here and start, you know, sculpting in this guy's eye and getting the ridge of his eye out and then start getting into his, I don't want to do that now because 
Um, then I'm gonna zoom out of the mesh and be like, oh my God, look at everything else. What if I have to change that eye? So you wanna just focus on the silhouette, keep it as low poly right now as you can. Don't move your dyno topology too down and just turn front faces only on this one and just go around and start creating you know, a silhouette of the sky right now. Okay, of whatever character you're creating. I'm creating kind of like a dragon, mythical, like alien kind of character. And you can see I'm creating a kind of snout for him now. All right, and I'm gonna come probably all the way off to the side. Something like this. And I'll smooth out, like I said, don't really get, he's almost looking like a Charmander from like the Pokemon shows. <laughs> I would say, and I'd move his eye up a little. I can see how I'm going about it is I'm keeping, I'm using the clay strips for build up and I'm keeping it very simple. I'm building up the bottom of his jaw now. So I can see the shape, the top of his lip, the ridge of his nose, his eyes, the bottom of his jaw, and then his cranium, which is back here, you know. I'm having all of this in mind when I'm creating. I'm not just putting random shapes there and just drawing randomly. I'm kind of keeping it in mind. So we're getting to the point where um, I'm kind of getting a general shape. You know, I'll probably push this in a little. And it's looking a bit weird. And why it's looking a bit weird is because it has no neck right now. So how I kind of create a neck is you can create topology and geometry and bring that in. Or what you could do is use a mask tool. So we'll come over here to mask. And draw a circle for his neck right around here. We're gonna invert it by hitting Control I and then use a grab tool. So we'll come here to the grab tool. And we're gonna bring this all the way down. Something like this. It's gonna stretch a lot, but that's okay. Don't worry about that too much. Just focus on bringing his neck down. Then you can smooth around the edges. Just focus on bringing his neck down to around right there, I would say. Smooth that out, start pulling these on the side, and then you can just hit Alt-M to finish that off. Now we're gonna use a clay strips brush and we're gonna start fixing all these, you know, pulled edges we just created. Add some geometry there and smooth it. Add some more geometry and smooth. And we'll probably stop it around the neck because we don't wanna create an entire creature right now. Uh, for nothing. So we'll stop it around the neck. What I like to do is take the scrape brush and flatten it out. Kind of like it's almost on a diorama or something. Like that. So I'll flatten it out just like that. I'll go back to clay strips and I'll kind of create... Let me scale my brush down. And you can scale your brush down by um, just uh, hitting the backspace um, bracket keys. So the smaller bracket key to bring it down, the bigger bracket key to bring it up. Okay. Now I'm gonna start creating um, the ridge of his nose, just like that. So I'm using just the clay strips brush now. And honestly, the whole time I've been using the clay strips brush. And I'm creating where his eye is gonna be inserted and I'm pushing out his nose, and now I'm gonna come down underneath the mesh. I'm gonna use a grab tool. I'm gonna start curving his face out, even though it is kind of curved already. I'm gonna curve it out just by moving things around, just like that. And then I'll probably come down to where his lip is, so where his jaw is connecting. I'll probably just bring this back, just like that. Now I'm gonna go back to the clay strips, and I'm gonna keep on building up my mass. Exactly like so. Okay. Typically around the neck, you want to create, especially for like a creature, you want to create maybe like a, a connection like here, especially if it's maybe like a reptile kind of creature. You don't want his neck to be smooth. Maybe you want some um, ligaments coming out and veins and stuff like that. Uh, not into detail, but just kind of sculpt it roughly in. So. I'll put it in just like that, you know, add some various details. Now for his jaw, 
um, even though he's going to be like a creature. For his job, we want to create, um, you know, something that we can kind of see. So I'll, I'll push this down and I'll, I'll push this inwards with the crease brush and I'll very roughly get his jaw shape just like that. Now we're going to smooth this out, but I'm doing it roughly now so I know how it's going to look. Okay. Now for his smile, you know, to, to divide where his jaw and his upper lip is, I'm just going to crease this in for his smile. I'll push this, I'll push this out a little and I'll bring this down. I'm going to bring it down just like that. And then you can smooth all that out. And we're going to use a scrape brush. So that was a brush that I was saying that it gives you a nice effect, but you have to be careful with. And we're going to start scraping alongside his lips. Come to like the roof of his nose and start sh scraping that down. Start scraping around his eyes and such. Start smoothing it all out. And I'll, I'll kind of very messily going around and just scraping planes and stuff like that around the characters. I'll use a clay strips brush around the character's face. Okay, we're getting the back of his head. Now you can see the back of his head is kind of flat and I kind of want it to be bigger. So all I would have to do is scale the grab brush up, kind of bring that back just like that. Okay, and smooth probably around and bring it back. And it's just kind of, because everything's very easy, easily changed right now. You know, you're not committed to one thing. So you see how his eye, I feel like his eyes are way too low. What I can do is I could just create geometry because there's no detail here. I could just create geometry to close that gap uh, in between where his eyes are. And now I don't have to have um, it that low. And now I can probably create an eye ridge right around here and then bring this down. And maybe make the, uh, the front of his nose a little bit thicker. So I'm carving things in by hitting control with the um, scrape brush, I'm carving things in like that. And then I'm building up details, like his head shouldn't probably be flat, you know, maybe we'll add, maybe we'll add subtle details around his eyes and create more of an emphasized skull. So maybe it's kind of more bulbous towards the top and all with the scrape brush, you know. Majority of this has been with the, the clay strips. I'm sorry, not I said uh, scrape. I'm sorry, the clay strips brush. Majority of this has been with the clay strip brush. We use the grab a lot. So you can see I'm just building up mass right here. And you don't, like I said, you don't want to get into detail at all in these stages. You want to stick with silhouette. You want to stick with make, finding your way to make it as clean as possible uh, before you get into, you know, creating any sort of any sort of detail. So I'm just using the clay strips to probably come down to around here. And maybe we'll create some sort of antennas. So now I'm pushing back, creating more of a a more diverse looking head. You can see as I'm just going over and over with the clay strips, I'm building it up. And I'll probably just, I'll probably use control to push in right there. Actually, I'll control Z. I don't want to push that in. I'll keep it like that. Push in towards his back. And now, like I was saying, the snake hook you can use in this scenario. And maybe pull this, pull these out. Well, these are, this is way too low of a strength. Okay, I think front faces only has to be off. Okay, there we go. So we'll take front faces only off and then we'll pull these out and we'll kind of get like a, an effect like that and then we'll create maybe one more like that. Let's create, try to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna scale the brush up, make the antennas a little bit bigger and something like that probably. I'll go back to the clay strips cause you can tell these are all stretched out and I'm just gonna go around them and you know, kind of add a little more detail and smooth it out because you can tell it's stretched out ridiculously. So you can tell in a matter of minutes also that you know we created a very, very fast sculpt 
from nothing in a matter of minutes. Uh, now another thing to bring this to life. So I'll add a UV sphere. I'll scale this sphere downwards. I'll hit one on my keyboard and five to go into orthographic view. And I'll scale this and I'll put it in towards where his eye is. Okay. I'll duplicate that, put it in the same spot. I'll probably move both of these up just a tad, just like so. Okay. Let's smooth both of these out and then join them together, set them to the origin, and let's go back to our sculpt. So what I did there is I basically created the eyeball for the, you know, I don't even know what to call this guy, creature or um, alien, or I don't, I don't really have a specific name for this guy. But, um, we've used a clay strip, so we use the grab, we use the snake hook, we use the um, scrape brush, the mask brush, um, even the sculpt draw. So to build up more of an eyelid, you can see I'm coming down over here build up more of a ridge around this eye. I can create with the sculpt draw tool something like this and I probably bring this down just a little bit and then go inwards and then build up something like that. Okay, very roughly like an eyelid is very complex. You definitely want more than just this in it, but this is just the basic start of what we're doing. And you can smooth it out. And then you can tell uh, right now we're kind of getting to the point where we probably would need to add a little bit more topology. I'll use a grab tool over here. So we might need to maybe turn our dyno topology up a little. But like I said, we're going to try to as do as much as we can um, at this stage. We don't want to you know, jump the ship on this one. We want to do as much as we possibly can at this low resolution. Like I said, once you go to that high resolution, it gets hard to change things, you know, to edit things and such. So I'll probably meet these in towards the middle. And everything with those brushes that I showed you. I haven't been using any other different brushes than the ones I originally showed you. Probably push outwards, just like so. Smooth everything. And you can tell the de you can not the detail, but you can tell you see a lot uh, more of your brush strokes when it's on a flat shaded mode opposed to a smooth shaded mode in the beginning when I showed you how it looks smooth shaded. So right now I'm gonna use a crease brush to kind of crease in these and then maybe split it out right around there into his antennas, just like so. And then maybe you can create a crease right here split that in just like that and you know if you have reference of you know a certain creature or something like that you can by all means use that but I'm just showing you how to create um, these different styles just with a couple of simple blender brushes you know that that are already you know w within the software no particular different brushes you have to use all all brushes within the software. Like I'm saying, I'm not getting it also within to detail. Like obviously towards the roof of this character's head, uh, I would start creating probably um, wrinkles and you know, I would probably look at reptile um, skin and such to create, you know, cooler looking skin. But for right now, I'm all I'm doing is focusing on the detail. I mean the <laughs> Sorry, not the detail, the silhouette of the creature. Or alien, I don't even know what this is yet. So use a grab brush. And in this situation, um, kind of like in the old situation I showed you, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the mask brush. Okay, and I'm gonna start drawing in this mask all the way on the bottom of his mouth. Okay, just like so. Okay, and you can probably stop around right there. And you can get in even a little bit more if you want. Probably control shift, and then, you know, that's basically good. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a snake hook, and I'm gonna bring down, just like that, a piece of, a piece of this upper lip. 
And then I'm gonna bring this out. Okay, I'm gonna use a scrape brush now to flatten this. Just like so. And I'm gonna turn my dyno topology down just a little bit. So I can get better a better kind of um, read on what I'm doing. I'll use a pinch brush to pinch this in. And I'll pinch these lines that I created also to create a, a cleaner effect. Like I said, I'll pinch this. I'll make it larger and I'll start pinching this in. I can use a grab brush now and start pointing this down more, pushing this in. And why I'm doing this, I'll probably bring my detail up to around eight now. Let's create maybe like a, a, you know, like a lid to his mouth. What a reptile would have, I guess, you know. But just, I just want to show you that without using the mask tool, it would, it would be very, very hard to do that. And also another helpful thing to do is if we control I and we invert this mask, correct? Uh, I would probably take this mask tool again and kind of get underneath here. Just because I could see underneath here is not mask because that's new geometry that we didn't kind of account for when we were creating our mask. Probably erase that. Come in here. Def definitely take your time when you're doing it. Now I'll use a grab tool and I'll push my bottom lip, push that inwards, just like that, to create that kind of extrusion on the topper lip. I'll LM, and I'll add some more geometry here, I'll kind of push that inwards, and it creates that outer ridge kind of a lot, lot better than what we originally had. Because typically on creatures, the top lip goes way above. Oh, it always comes up for some reason. It's hard to get rid of the setting panel on my computer. But you create that top lip, and it's typically. How do you get rid of this? Okay, awesome. You create that top lip, and it's typically uh, on creatures and human anatomy also, it's typically above um, the bottom lip. Okay. Now what you can do is probably create, you can start now adding a little more detail. So creating this detail within his eyelids and such. Going down and you know, like I said, we'll smooth this neck part out. And we'll maybe add some detail into his neck and then smooth that out to create this anatomy. Anatomy is something definitely uh, if you are going to get into sculpting, you don't have to typically know the names, um, especially when you get into like creature anatomy and stuff, but it all kind of comes off from human anatomy, you know. There's not like different anatomy for, you know, different humans. It's kind of all based off human anatomy. So when you're creating creatures um, and you know your anatomy for, you know, basic humans, which we're going to be going over in the next section, you're gonna be able to create kind of anything. Um, obviously do with practice. I'm gonna use a scrape brush to kind of flatten this out. Let me go down here just to see if my curve is, yeah, perfect. Start flattening this out and then smoothing. Same with the top of his mouth, I'll flatten this out. Just like that, like that. I'll come and I'll probably meet at this point right here and then Come straight down and smooth that in. Like I said, I usually create these face planes with um, with this brush. So start creating these planes right here. I'll start smoothing all of this out. I'm using my scrape brush to bring this down. I'll probably use a snake hook tool. So if I was doing this mesh as like maybe a project for myself. Um, if I wanted to continue it, or maybe let's say if it was like freelance work for maybe let's say a client, I would definitely take the time to go into those um, pieces in the back that I made and refine them a lot, a lot more. And you know, probably something like this to finish off the base mesh wouldn't take too long. 
but to create so around the eyelid I'm gonna create I'm gonna flatten this out too just like that but to finish this as a full uh, piece it would probably take around um, I can't say exactly but it would take a couple days absolutely like without a doubt to finish this as a full piece so um, don't get don't get you know mad if when you're creating it, if it's hard at first, you know, if it's not looking exactly how you want it to look like at first, don't get mad at it. Uh, don't be like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I've been practicing this whole time and it's still looking bad because that's totally okay. Um, typically when you're creating a sculpt, it it's not going to tend to look like exactly what you want in the beginning. So um, you can see around the eyelid, I'm, I use the sculpt draw brush a lot create the ridge of the lid and this is a kind of a perfectly shaped eye um, humans eyes don't, aren't really round and perfect like this but just for this creature I kind of made it um, round like this just so I didn't want him to look too aggressive looking I wanted it to be more of a cuter style of a creature that's why I'm kind of I'm kind of shaping his eyebrows like such um, in a very non-aggressive way and I'm making his eyes big and I kind of space them out um, farther apart also to make it look like it's non-aggressive so you know I'll start pushing out here and I don't want to get into detail when creating these but you know kind of aligning these eyes and such and if you want to probably push this in what you could do is going to mess up. It's definitely going to mess up his eyes. You're going to have to go back. But you could just because we're working on a lower resolution mesh right now. And that's what's the beauty of this, of not focusing on detail right now and kind of just focusing on the silhouette. You can move these things and, you know, it's very easy to just move the eyes. You know, I could just scale the eyes in and bomb. And then I could just move them up and, you know, opposed to... If we detailed, say, something like ridiculously, when you use a grab tool to move it like that, it's going to be so hard and so taxing on your system. And it's going to be hard to move things around. You're going to just commit to what you have just because, you know, you can't move it around. So that's why I tend to try to create a very, very clean silhouette in the beginning. Um, so... Towards the end, you know, we can have something clean. And this is from starting from a sphere. Um, if you are trying to create game assets, I would definitely, definitely recommend not working and starting off with nothing. Uh, it's just, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's not worth it. I picked the wrong tool. And let's fill this out. Now see, the inflate tool would actually be good in this situation because you can see it's kind of thin right now so I'd use the inflate tool right here to thicken all of these edges out up so I'll turn front faces only on I would thicken all these edges out just a little bit to thicken it so it's not kind of compressed and then I'd smooth it out use a grab tool to pull these out maybe a little bit and you know you can take hours upon hours on these um, you know and you can kind of just get lost in it but push these up help bring that down so we do a lot of things to create you know your kind of sense of whatever creature or character you want to create um, if you wanted to create spines on his back maybe like a like a spikes um, you can either you know maybe mask it out or you can you know just very easily um, you know, create the spikes and then smooth out. And then obviously refine, you would have to refine these. You would have to go in and pinch them and uh, go around them, add more geometry to them. Um, just showing you how to sh like concept things very quickly. Because if you don't have a concept piece, even when I have a concept piece in front of me, uh, typically I will, um, I will still have to concept things in the mesh. I don't know exactly every single time when I'm sculpting the perfect 100% way to go about things. So I like concepting things as I'm sculpting. Um, 
just to try things out, you know, if I push things in, push things out, oh, I don't like this, I can control Z, uh, move things around, I move things around constantly, constantly, uh, it's ridiculous how much, how many times I, I've created maybe an eye shape, but I've moved it around and stuff like that, so, yeah, I'll probably push the jaw up, smooth this out, and, you know, you could just create in the matter of, I don't know how much time we have left, kind of running out of time for this session, but in the matter of kind of 20 to 30 minutes, you can create maybe a, a very quick concept for your game and maybe your game, your the pet for your game or the hero, you know, because aliens could be heroes too, I guess. I'll put these ridges on his nose and then something like that but yeah I, I just wanted to kind of show you guys um, what you can do with the basic brushes within um, blender uh, we we used almost all of the brushes that I showed you uh, what did did we not use oh, I think we use every single brush we use the uh, clay strips absolutely we use a crease brush, we use the grab, of course. We even use inflate. We use the mask a couple times, the pinch, the scrape, the sculpt draw, and the snake hook. Um, we use all those brushes a lot. And in the matter of 20 minutes, we've concepted a creature that, you know, maybe you can say, hey, I wanna go, I wanna go on and create the final product of this creature. Or you can say, hey, like, this is it, you know, this guy does, doesn't look as good as I wanted him to look, and this is kind of the line uh, where I draw. So, in the matter of 20 minutes, so you didn't have to kind of finalize him and create this high poly creature and find out like, oh, I don't really like this guy, you know. I don't know, I, I turned that into a tooth. I don't know why I did that, but. Okay, guys, all in all, that was it. I don't really like that tooth at all. I could probably control Z that right now. Okay, all in all, guys, that is it. Uh, we showed you all of the kind of tips and tricks on what we can do to create a very quick sculpt. In the next tutorial, we're going to be going over anatomy because um, I showed you how to do this very quickly, but I didn't kind of structure you on what, how things look, how to look at references and how to sculpt from looking at this references. So in the next couple sessions, we're gonna be covering that, and then we'll create a nice final product um, to wrap in all of these practices with. Thank you guys so much for watching this session. My name is Steven Davidian. Hey there guys, my name is Steven Davidian, and today we're gonna to be going over anatomy. So anatomy is something that is obviously near and dear to sculpting just because you have to understand basic anatomy. You don't have to be a genius or an expert at it, but whatever level you're at it uh, typically translate to your sculpts. So the better you are at anatomy, the more you practice, uh, people who tend to practice more tend to have better looking sculpts. Um, in this video, we're gonna be covering kind of basic shapes and how we would go about it. So you can see we have a base mesh already already in here um, and I'll obviously allow you guys to have this base mesh in um, the project files and such but this is a base mesh that we have um, it has the line for the chest it has kind of some bicep deformation uh, I mean some bicep formation his neck his head it's obviously not the greatest um, thing that is made but it's what we have so what we're gonna start off by doing is going into sculpt mode okay so we're in sculpt mode, and now we can go to clay strips. We're gonna turn on dyno topology. We're gonna go over some basic anatomy. So if I come over here and I show you, let me try to pull this screen over here. You can kind of see, um, you know, chest variations, how the abdominals kind of lay on top of each other, the rib cage and the lats coming down the scapula back here, the spinal region, the middle lats, his lower back, his glutes, his hamstrings go into his calves, and you can kind of see the flow um, at every side. And you wanna look at the body in different variations and different angles. And that's what I try to tend to do when I am um, creating any kind of sculpt, even at this level that I am at now. Um, I never go into something without reference and some detail. 
So um, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you how to create kind of a simple body um, and I, by going over anatomy. And I'm just wanting to create this because I want to show you how you can go about creating it in certain different brushes uh, and kind of the kind of edge flow and workflow we want to go with. So, so we have um, Dino Topology turned on. And I typically start with the clay strips brush and I stay with that brush almost throughout the whole way. So since we already have a base model, which I always suggest, always suggest you guys use uh, in the beginning, since we already have a base model, we kind of have our um, template for us. You know, we see, you can see the lats back here, you know, you can see his lats forming back here. You can see the shoulder region already popping out right here, okay? Uh, his traps aren't really too exposed, but usually the traps, they come out to um, the back of the neck like so. And, you know, they map out right there. And I'll push this in, and I'll probably cave this in a little for his neck. And then his chest is aligned perfectly for us already. Probably put the chest right underneath the armpit just a little, and then you can map it out a little bit better. Now all I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm going with the geometry we already have and I'm just creating uh, with the clay strips brush a little more geometry for us. So, you know, I'm pushing in. Uh, and this is more kind of a stylized character also. Um, you can just tell from the shape of his hips and such. So if you want to make this more realistic looking, um, use your grab tool and kind of push these hips out and smooth that out. I could just push out and now I'm just adding geometry. I'm going over this entire guy, sculpting and then smoothing, sculpting and smoothing. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is just because we have some basis to sculpt on when we start actually putting in our pieces for our base mesh. When you build up, you want you know a lot of mass there so you can um, carve in details and such. It's hard to do that when you have such little polygons to work with. And you could have easily used a multi-resolution modifier, like I said in the first video, for this because this topology was already clean and you could have used it for, um, you know, creating the details in this mesh. But we're sticking with dyno topology right now. Um, we will get into head shape too, so I'm going to actually detail some heads. Let me detail this entire head. I'll probably narrow the back of his head. And I'm not going to get into too much uh, too much of how the head shape is kind of looking, but I'll kind of um, just shape it out so it looks more like a head. I don't want to lose myself um, in creating this head. Just because I'm more based, I'm more focused on creating the form of the character and how he looks, opposed to you know creating the details like the eyes and stuff in his head. Like I don't really care about that stuff right now. I care about um, you guys learning how to um, go about creating different body styles and different body structures. And I'm gonna show you how to do that um, within these videos. So all I'm doing right now is yeah, I'm, I'm just putting in geometry in here. Just going over and putting in more geometry um, in certain places, like the back. And I'll smooth that out. The glutes. I'll put in geometry right there, and I'll smooth that out. And I would say I would even go down to his feet. Start putting in some geometry for his feet. Okay. And um, when you're beginning you know starting blender or say you're more towards the middle say you've been learning for a year a year and a half um, you want to you want to kind of know what your limit is you don't want to go and do hyper realistic sculpts um, when you're you know a beginner just because you're gonna just set yourself up for failure um, you want to kind of learn the basics learn the basics of realism um, but don't try to replicate it exactly because it's gonna get it's gonna be hard you know replicating the exact you know skin folds and how anatomy looks to the T it's really hard you know some muscles are relaxed some muscles aren't um, it's hard to replicate a real life like person so just focus on 
I would say creating full meshes, but even on your spare time, I would say, you know, creating maybe a cylinder, just blocking it off and focusing on maybe a shoulder for one day. Or then, you know, maybe doing the scapula going into the back and the lats just like this. And then how the lats go into the traps uh, towards the guy's back. How the traps overlap, go into the front bone of his chest, stays into his inclined chest, goes towards the middle piece of his chest where you can create striations. That goes into the under part of his chest and then ribs off to his abdomen wall. And, you know, do those in parts. Don't, don't do it all in one, one kind of sitting because then you can't kind of specialize and focus in on one but if you do say the bicep one day and then you come back here and you start sculpting on the tricep because the tricep is, is its own beast you know the bicep is hard but also the tricep is hard so um if you do the whole thing in one day you're gonna you know whatever one you do first you're gonna put more time in you're gonna kind of speed through the second one so focus on one each and every day in this video we're obviously going to go over the whole, whole thing show you how to do it to your best of your ability but you know if you're practicing in the beginning and starting off i would suggest doing probably one thing a day and practice at that you know maybe today i'm doing arm studies you know bicep studies tomorrow i'm doing studies of the lips on the face and then the ears um hands hands is something i still have a problem with till this day that's why we're not going to even go over in this video because that will take a long time to kind of teach. Okay, so we have a general shape, you know, obviously we move the chest up and stuff like that, but we have a general shape of what we want right now. All right, something like this. Move this and we'll start caving this in, creating a chest, start smoothing this out. If you want to create the bulge for his... Um, private parts you can and I'll probably add a little more geometry to his fingertips and such just to make it a little bit cleaner it doesn't look this weird usually for the, the palm of his hand on the side of his hand it goes up just like so this is all messed up though right now so we're gonna do this very quickly this base mesh isn't the best there's a lot of base meshes also online uh, ZBrush has a lot of material for that. Um, it's a lot of very nice clean base meshes. You don't want to get detailed out uh, meshes. Meshes, I'm saying meshes. <laughs> you don't want to get detailed out meshes just because um, you're going to have to kind of decimate them by just, you know, smoothing over and getting rid of all the detail they already did. So focus on getting meshes that are just basically, um, you know, cylinders and polygons going into each other and creating like human anatomy. So you don't have to do all that repetitively over and over again as you're um, trying to sculpt. Because every second you're not sculpting, you know, maybe you're doing like creating a base mesh or something. Um, you kind of lose that time of getting better and better and better. So, and it's not cheating by any means, you know, using a base mesh. So some people feel like, oh, if it's not made by me, it's cheating. No, no, no. You change it to the point where it doesn't even look like what it looks like anymore. You know, it's so change and evolve to the point where you can't even tell what it is anymore. Okay, so let's zoom out and let's smooth all this out. And we can come here to the back and we can see that, you know, it's looking pretty cool. We come here and we can see basic definition. Like if I come over here and I do harsh definition, right? You can come over here, you can see shoulder definition. You can see kind of the bicep coming along. You can't really see the tricep right back here, but like right there, but you can see, you know, some sort of like ridge. Forearm muscle you can't really see, but the caved into the abdomen you can see, the chest you can definitely see. Um, like I said, we define the traps a little. Uh, we have to define the scapula. Definitely focus on the uh, spinal of the character. Uh, a lot of people tend to forget that, you know, humans have bones and bone structure is huge. You know, if you miss bone structure, you just start getting onto the muscles and skins, um, your mesh will look weird and deformed. So definitely put down that line work uh, for the bones and it'll help a lot. 
Um, you can even get kind of a quadricep right here. You can kind of see that we created a quadricep um, into his knee and then around this calf. You can see the thickness of this calf, but nothing crazy. So we lined out a lot of good places. So his chest right here. We can line that out. We lined out his shoulder, his rear delt that goes into his scapula. So, you know, you definitely have to get that scapula present or else like I said the mesh will look weird you want his traps popping out and his spine and then you have to get his lats obviously coming in you cannot forget about the lats whatsoever the lats are a very important muscle and then even the lower back muscles too are important every muscle is important by any means but so you can see we we sculpted out basic lines with the crease brush. You know, we come in here, we get the incline chest piece of the character. Uh, basic lines of, of what we're doing. And I, I don't even know myself uh, all the anatomy, the names and such. As long as you know how it looks like and how you can perform, uh, that's all that matters. You don't have to know every single name of each anatomy part. I mean, that is kind of hard to learn. Um, if you go to the gym or you work out, you tend to f kind of pick up on names, like, you know, forearms, biceps, tricep, like those are the things you're working out. So you tend to pick up on the names, but um, the harder stuff, you know, the things that people don't kind of work out is where it gets tricky and it gets a little harder, and things like that. As long as you can look at a picture or look at an anatomy chart and see, oh, this looks, this is how this looks like when it's relaxed, or this is how this actually looks like, not what I think it looks like. Because you, sometimes I think I know what a bicep looks like, and then, you know, I try to model a bicep, sculpt the bicep, and it, it doesn't look anything like that. So, okay. We're not going to get too into the face right now. We're just going to start smoothing all this out. Probably push this out and then pull this back like so. So um, since we have the basics done, since we have all this stuff out of the way, uh, we built up mass, we kind of mapped out our, our muscles with a crease brush. Um, I'm going to show you how we can go about doing this now. So this is obviously a block off. This is not going to be a final piece. You're not going to want to render this, put it in your portfolio. This is a block off to start kind of the process of creating sculpts. So for the shoulder muscle, um, like I said, we don't want to get into any detail. But I'll start doing some build up. If you want this guy to be a muscular man, which he already is built like he is. He's already built like he's going to be a muscular man. You're going to want to do some build ups in... You know, the shoulders, just like so. You can probably bring down the relative detail down, just like so. You're going to want to build up the bottom of the chest, okay? And like I said, everyone's body is different. So, not one way. Like, some people don't have predominant decline chest towards the bottom of their chest. Like, I know Arnold Schwarzenegger, these huge bodybuilders from back in the day, and even bodybuilders now. Um, these are the guys that are peak of their genetics and these are guys that are, you know, big all year round, but especially on competition days, they are, you know, you see every bone of the, mu every striation of the muscle. And if, if that's a style you're going for, by all means go for it. But if you want to go for a more natural, realistic look, uh, maybe like a character that you would see in an everyday life. Um, maybe that's just slightly more jacked than some other people. You want to take those attributes that those guys have and just tone them down. Opposed to, you know, creating a replica of those. Just because they're really jacked, that doesn't mean like those guys are the 0.00001% of the, how the population actually looks. So you can see right now I'm building up mass with the um, clay strips brush. I'm just building up mass in the chest. I'm shaving it out a little more. You can see I brought it down. And I'm shaving it out a little more. I'll even probably use a crease brush right here um, to carve in a separation between my chest. I'll go inwards and my shoulder. I'm going to carve in a slight separation just like that. All right? And I'll maybe pull a line out right there. 
I'll start carving in some separation between my, my decline chest and where my body lies. Something like that, you know? And I'll start using control to push it down a little and then probably go across like muscle strands. So I'm envisioning, I'm not trying to replicate how muscle strands look because muscle strands obviously don't look like this. I'm kind of building it up just in that fashion. I'll kind of take down the middle just like that. I don't want the middle of his chest to be popping out too much. Okay. Now it looks it looks very ridiculous because we built this up. You know, we built the top of his chest up. It's popping out, but we didn't build anything else up. We only built that part up. I think this is a clavicle. So this has to obviously come up and merge towards the top of his chest and then come downwards, just like so. Okay, and you can start pushing some things inside the neck. And most people, I've learned this muscle from like dra watching Dragon Ball Z and stuff. Most people have muscles around their neck if they're muscular. Now this is called a specific muscle and men, like more predominant men, masculine men ha do have this muscle that's more protruded out. I kind of, I don't know what the exact name is called. There's definitely a name for it. And it allows men to look more masculine. Okay, it's not the trap muscle because the trap muscle is the muscle that's over here that, you know, it's kind of going over. So this trap muscle kind of originates from like, it starts kind of low. You have lower trapezius muscles, you know, that are coming over like so. And they're coming in and they're wrapping around the trap like this. Just like so, you know. Then you have your lat muscle right here. And then we're going to kind of carve out the scapula, which is right around here. Flatten that out. It's right around the back of the shoulder. And we'll use a scrape brush to flatten this out too. It's kind of like the scapula. Start just using the scrape brush all around here. Like I said, the scrape brush, it's a very harsh brush, but you can use it to kind of flatten things out and clean up, clean up stuff. That's what we're trying to do right now. Okay, we'll use a crease brush now to sculpt out this scapula a little and then smooth it out. Because I said, things aren't sculpted at all times on humans, you know? I'll smooth that out. I'll start bringing out the lats because um, that's predominant in the back, you know, especially on relatively low body fat kind of guys. It's a predominant muscle. Okay, so something like that. Now, the, obviously, the back muscle isn't perfect like this, you know, maybe there's be some variations in here. It's not like a perfectly shaped muscle like this, the lats. It's not like a perfectly straight and it goes all the way up perfectly. Like that's, I, I wish it was like that, it would look cool. But um, if you're going for more semi, semi realistic, you want to kind of focus on, you know, proportions and stuff and making sure the muscle looks like how it looks. And a big thing is in the back, you want, you want the back to have a cave. So basically like, his muscles, his lats, you want them to cave up on the top, right? Like this. And then towards the middle of it, you want it to be inwards. So if I use G, pushing in right here, I'm gonna use a crease brush now. So where the spinal region is, you want to push that inwards so you can crease this in just like so. I'll make sure the back is coming out too. So crease all the way down, honestly, towards the tailbone almost. And you can flatten all that out. And I'm going to be drawing some, some muscles on his lower back. This is probably where most people would have skin. Uh, well, I, all people would have skin here, but most people, m most people's muscles right here wouldn't be showing. Uh, they would have, I wouldn't call them love handles, but they would have more of their hips predominated right here. So we're going to come over and get his obliques, his hip muscles down to where his groin is. That's kind of separating where his foot, uh, his leg is. So we get those oblique muscles right around there. Like I said, you can draw his groin, you can bulge it if you want. If you don't want to, just keep it as is. 
flatten that out. So you're going to come from the back, so where his glutes are. You know, build up his glutes just like so. With this, and this is predominantly, almost I think every stroke I've used has been with the clay strips. Now I know somebody will probably be like, oh, probably go back and watch the video again and be like, oh, if you use this brush, this brush, and this brush. But I'm pretty sure <laughs> all, the, all the strokes I've made has been uh, with this brush. I think I've used a grab brush. Oh, I've used a scrape brush. And I, I resent what I just said. I've used a scrape brush. Okay. So we have our obliques coming from the side. Um, over here, we'll get like some striated. His abs kind of pull out towards the top. And you want to get your lat kind of coming out a little bit so from the front view you can kind of see it coming out that's what I'm gonna kind of push out just a little bit nothing crazy because like I said we're not trying to make the next Olympia here just like something like that and you can see I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it very rough you know I'm not trying to go too in detail with with anything when I'm doing this I'm keeping it as rough as I possibly can um, you know creating muscle in the neck and then flattening it and then Trying to keep it clean. Because this is not supposed to have detail. And this is not supposed to be a final piece by any means when we're creating it. We're just trying to get um, the basic look out of the way. How we want him to look. And then from there, that's when we can start creating um, cleaner detail and such. Over here towards this trap, I'm going to create some variation to it. And this goes well with stylized guys too. So when you're creating a stylized creature or character, I'm gonna push these shoulders in too. You see this over here? I'm gonna bring these shoulders up, push them inwards. Push his whole arm a little inwards too. I'll bring his chest too. You can see his chest is popping out a little too much. It doesn't look, doesn't look normal. Okay, probably bring it up too. Bring all of this up just a little bit. People's chests usually don't meet towards the middle like that. They probably have a gap. Most people, um, you know, like I said, if you if you're making them realistic looking, most people have a gap. Most people's chests don't meet perfectly in the middle uh, like this. So, so I'm trying to trying to gr create some variation um, with it. Okay. Probably create a curve towards the chest, and you can see I'm going back and forth. Like when I created the chest um, in the beginning, and I came back to it very, very quickly, and I was I readjusted because it, it just didn't look the way I wanted it to look uh, in the beginning. So um, when you're creating something, you don't have to commit to it like right off the bat. Over here, I'm start starting to sculpt out his abdomen. I want his abdomen to be round. So you can see I caved this in, but I'm going to bring it out with the grab brush. I want his abdomen to be round. Because by no means, unless I'm sure there's a couple people in the world that have body fat levels that low, where their stomach is caving inwards, <laughs> you don't want to have that. You want their chest typically to be above it. Like you don't want to pull his stomach out like there, because then he'll look like he has, he has a gut, even though a lot of people do um, have this kind of body type to where um, their stomach is kind of outwards, but they still have um, an abdomen that looks good, uh, unless when they tighten up, so when they flex their muscles, that's when you can see it flattens out and it looks a lot nicer. But a lot of people tend to have like a little protrusion um, out of their stomach. It's not like staying flat at all times. but. Just for the sake of this, we're gonna pull it out though. We're not gonna, we're gonna definitely not have it encaved. Push into where the chest is. We're starting to level out how the chest is looking. So the chest is popping out ridiculously right now. We built up that mass just in the beginning, but now after we built that up, we can start leveling this out. People's chest usually from the top comes down. People don't have like uh, the top of their chest and the bottom of their chest usually isn't the same exact size. It's kind of like a slight slant um, as it's coming down. And that's what we're trying to replicate right now. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm just using the grab brush now and just moving things around to my liking till I get something I, I kind of can work with. So we'll use a scrape. And so abs are kind of tricky. You know, you can do abs in so many different ways. Um, you can make them very, very noticeable and they're like popping out and protruding and they look crazy and sick. Or you can go more of a, a natural looking way where it's, or you can, you know, you can kind of see them where they're relaxed looking and, but they're not, you know, chiseled and lined like directly. I'll show you what I mean. Like there's not like a line directly in between and then the line right there and then a line right there and then, you know, just like a sculpted six pack. Because if somebody that's muscular does have a six pack like that, um, that's how it would look like, but it would look like that un without skin. Um, you have to focus on, you know, every human has skin that goes over these muscles. So when you're looking at anatomy, uh, it's going to help you a lot, but you have to realize these people have skin that's going to cover all of these striations and muscles. But if you're at a low enough body fat, obviously you'll see that because, you know, skin will be like a so tight onto the muscle to where you can you can't miss it but I guess for this kind of scenario for this specific scenario I'll create more of a, a six pack I'll start bringing it out to you don't want to create the six pack condensed you don't want to have it um, you don't want to have it pushed in like this like because it's going around the body the body is um, rounded it's not flat so when you're creating these six packs, make sure you're kind of emphasizing, pulling these muscles back. This is going around the body, you know? That's what I, same with the face. When people are creating lips and, and eyes on the face, they, they create them on a flat surface. But um, you just have to realize that the body is round. Which you guys should know, of course. Like That's not like... <laughs> Not part of this tutorial, like hey, the body is around, but um, yeah, I'm just creating, you know, some detail towards the bottom of his abs. Um, I tend to smooth it out. You can see, like over here, I'm gonna lower the uh, the detail down to seven. You can see over here, I'm creating. Um, I'm gonna look at the side a little. I'm creating the abs, and they are. They are on the top and bottom noticeably noticeable, but towards the bottom, people tend to hold more fat. So you're not going to see like the edges of the bottom abs if this guy has a six pack, you know, you just see kind of how it looks. So right now I'm noticing that I'm going to start pushing these up. So I'm noticing that, you know, the gap between where his chest is, right? And the abdomen looks really, really far. And I don't want that. So I'm going to start pushing all of this up. And just like that. Start smoothing this out. Start going around here. Look at your model from almost every angle too. I would, I would suggest. You know, when you're, when you're sculpting. You don't want to like get stuck on just looking at it like that. Perfectly straight. Just because it's going to cause some issues. Um, down the line if you're just looking at it in one um, way so definitely take the time to look at it in different kind of lights in different angles to see how it's looking you know if things are popping out from the side kind of weird if things are looking good I'll help you all a lot in the longer I know I'm building up a lot. I'm, I'm using a lot of mass to build up, and you can see. So if we hit from the side view, you can see it's starting to starting to get like a lot. These abs are popping out a lot. You can see from where his chest is, they're popping out more than you know probably the average person with abs would look. Abs are ten; they tend to be flat in most cases. So I'm building up a lot of mass on them. But what you can do is you can just take the grab brush. Start pushing this in towards the middle. We don't want to flatten it, like I said, because you have to be be careful keeping that round shape of the abs. 
And you can have some subtle variety by pushing in where they intersect a little further to give it a subtle bump. But nothing ridiculous. Don't have it like one out here. A, a more realistic style, I would say. Keep it more subtle to where you can, you know, you can read it from the side and it looks, it looks believable, I would say. Okay. Now the chest, the chest is falling and it doesn't look too good. I, you can see that it's falling down and, you know, it gives it more of a natural look, but I would want to change. I would. I don't want it to like be too like almost to where it looks fat. So I'm gonna smooth it out. I think a little, and we'll build it up a little more when we get into um, working with the chest a little more. We'll start building that those shapes up over here. I'm gonna start start cutting these. So creating these cuts right here, smoothing these cuts out. Okay. And when you are sculpting, everyone kind of tends to have their own, their own way to do things. You know, this is the way I do things. You know, there's other people who sculpt um, in videos and that they do things a different way doesn't mean my way their way your way is wrong necessarily it's just there's a million things that you can do in a million different ways that you can take to get to the end result of what you're trying to make you just want to find an effective way and a fun way for you you know if you like um you know, doing one part at a time instead of doing the whole thing, like the whole silhouette of a character, like doing like parts at certain parts at certain times, then I'm gonna create his belly button, by the way. We're gonna do that with the sculpt tool. Then yeah, by all means do that. It's not the most effective way, but if that's how you like to do it, maybe like after you see, um, create the rim of his belly button. Maybe after you see, um, something that's finalized almost and finished it gives you motivation to create you know something cleaner and nicer and finish the model by all means like who am i to say that that's wrong it's just not efficient because if you have to change say something in the head you know then then a problem occurs but there's a, there's so many different ways to to, to go about creating but if you follow rules and you try your best to to see like what people that are better than you are doing, even me, like I, I always look at people that are better than me and I, I try to, I don't tend to copy, but I try to, you know, implement some stuff they do and see if it can fit into my workflow. See if I, if I can, you know, enjoy doing something along the lines of that. I'm creating the, the extender of the abs, so these parts that extend outwards, creating something along the lines of that. Now, what is this muscle called? I could probably open up one of my anatomy books and find it, but I think that would take too long. <laughs> Stop the video and try to try to find you know one of my anatomy books and, and find this muscle's name. Tend to have a couple of them, you know. There's there tends to be like three or four of them, and on the side of like your ribs over here, you tend to start seeing like ripplets right there on very very low body fat kind of characters. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go that in depth on it because that's when you start getting into like really really finite detail. Right now, I'm just focusing more on creating um, build up. You can see it looks very like rough. It looks very like harsh. Um, to be honest, I like uh, <laughs> I like when it looks like that's weird, but I do like when it's more rough and harsh. For me, for some reason, I don't know why, but um, 
I like when it looks rough like this. But you can just start smoothing it out to get that better look that you want. That most of you guys would probably like how it looks when it when it's starting to get smoothed off. Starting to sculpt the chest a little more. So you have the chest looking clean. Um, shoulder muscle tends to fall right over the chest, kind of inserts almost into the chest, and it falls and it makes a, a point towards the shoulder, and it comes to the round back of the shoulder, almost to the scapula, and it, it consists of your rear delt, and you just round out these, you know, you create very round shoulders. Not too round, you know, because you don't want your shoulders to be like boulders and then it, it creates like more of a concave in cave look for the character and that's not good you don't want something that looks like he's he's encaved so you don't want your shoulders to kind of overpass your chest you don't want your shoulders to be out here to where your chest is almost and create a nice clean looking shoulder same with the tricep you want to create a thick tricep that probably pops out Pop this out. You just look at anatomy, you look how triceps are and such, and then you'll cr you'll find a very very nice way to create it. You know, it comes on the triceps is consistent of three different muscle groups. That's why it's called the tricep. Fun fact: the bicep is consisted of two different muscle groups. That's why it's called the bicep. Okay, I'm creating some thickness. In here like I said no detail no striation right now just general thickness within try the tricep same with the bicep I'm gonna create some just general thickness nothing crazy nothing over the top I kind of want this guy's arms to be a little thicker than what they are right now at the moment and how I'm gonna make his bicep pronounced is kind of sculpt in to where the shoulders connecting right and I'll create that s that cut that separation and then I can come in and I could start modeling out the bicep now bicep is very tricky you, you want to keep it curved the muscle belly you want to have it full um, so it looks very looks like it has a lot of volume in it but you have to make sure towards the tip where it's connecting to the forearm that you know it's not looking it's not like you can see right here is just getting like a slight problem brachialis is right around here I think brachialis is right around the forearm too. Forearm's a very hard muscle to get right. So you have this outer edge of your forearm, which is a brachialis, and then you have the inner edge right here, which pops out like those Popeye forearms. If you want to give him Popeye forearms, and you tend to create smaller wrists. So it creates the illusion that his forearms are bigger. You come down gradually as you're making it. And I'll probably create these wrists slightly thinner. I'll smooth out. I'll start creating a forearm that's slightly thicker. And I'll, I don't want it to be too thick to where it looks unproportional, like his forearm is almost bigger than his hand. But I want it slightly thicker than the average forearm. I'll start smoothing things out. And I'll start creating a bicep better. Right around here. Start caving in. There's no muscle right there. You know, the bicep insertion is already getting inserted right into here. So there's no muscle right there. So there's no need to create thickness right there by any means. So you have this insertion into the forearm. Okay, I'm gonna go to clay strips and I'll start killing that down. Awesome. Okay. I'm gonna start flattening the top, uh, the bottom of it where it's inserting, like so. Start smoothing everything and then towards the top, towards the middle, I mean, I'm gonna start pulling this out. I'll use a grab tool in this situation to pull this out a little. 
just like so, and then smooth, and then pull, to give it a curved shape almost. Trying to pull a little towards the muscle belly. And then I'm pushing in just a little bit, just because I could see it's starting to almost hang, which I don't want that kind of look. Start pulling out the thickness of his forearm just a little bit too. Okay. It all depends, like I said, on the style of character you're creating. Creating a more stylistic character that maybe has huge forearms, not as big biceps, then yeah, by all means, definitely you know, create those Popeye looking forearms. But if you have a character that, you know, come up here as the Brachialis comes up, connect it in. If you have these, these huge massive forearms on your character, um, and then create the elbow also for style purposes. Um, I know a lot of games um, and a lot of people who sculpt, they tend to make their forearms like huge, like they're bigger than the character's arms typically, and it creates like a a unique style, I guess. So if you're going for a style like that, yeah, by all means, uh, go for creating that. But you know, we're trying to stay more in like a a realistic value, just so we can we know what how how it looks. So like. Let's just say hypothetically, I'm gonna do it very roughly. So we know how the forearm kind of looks. I'll probably push in this hand a little too, smooth all this out. And then we can we can play with it after, you know, after we know how it looks. So we know how the abdomen looks, right? Okay, we definitely have to fix his elbows. You know how the abdomen looks, then you can start pushing it out, create maybe a different style, maybe like bringing his stomach out, you know, widening his shoulders bringing his back out, start creating a different style character very quickly. Once you know how basic anatomy works, and then you would have to go in, maybe bring, fatter people tend to have wider hips, they come down a little, and you bring that down, and we didn't do the legs yet, but you know, we could do a lot. And then there's chest, you can droop their shoulders, you don't want that harsh stand. And you can do so many different things to create more of a different style character but you have to understand the anatomy before you can break them kind of like you have to know the rules to break the rules um, usually there's you know there's no rules in art I would say um, but there's fundamentals and you know anatomy is anatomy at the end of the day like if something is fundamentally wrong it's it's not gonna look good so you have to pay attention to your fundamentals. There's some things you can break, you know, because you, you obviously want to break the rules. You don't want to stay in the box or else nothing ever creative would have ever happened if, you know, you just stayed in the box at all times. But um, you kind of have to know what to break. So. Yeah, I'm just creating more of the rear delt to push out. Now I'm start creating the traps, kind of pulling over like this. And I'm doing all this very roughly, you can tell. Like I'm not really caring about how I'm affecting other parts of the body right now. I'm just focusing on every muscle group individually. Probably create a thicker neck, just like so. Probably push this in too. And I'll probably pull this out like such give it some thickness like that creating every muscle individually um, and not focusing on um, I mean I'm not focusing on the detail I'm focusing on the overall overall piece as I'm creating it creating strands right here I'm going back and forth you know I don't stay on just the chest because like I was saying you know if I could come here and work in the chest um, the problem with that is if I stay on the chest, I, I get lost in it, you know, like if I'm coming in here and working on it, I'm going to get into the point where it's like, all right, I like this. I'm going to go into detail when in reality, like if I go and I start working on different things, like I start working on the back or something, 
I'm going to look at this and be like, oh my god, the, the chest doesn't match the back at all. What am I doing? So that's why I don't like really necessarily working on one piece of what I'm doing. I like kind of start broadening the quads, the top of his quad. I like kind of building things up, you know, I smooth all this out to make it look a little nicer. Even though I, I tend to like this look, but I know you guys don't. So it's like an acquired look. I like the messy kind of sculpted everywhere, like doesn't make sense kind of look, which is weird. Because then again, I like high fidelity kind of things. I like creating high quality assets um, that look super refined. But I don't know. Kind of like the best of both worlds, I guess. I'm creating the nose now. And typically in a process, I would probably create, um, i will probably create the face a lot, a lot sooner than what I did. I usually create the face probably first, um, before anything. Which is crazy, because now in this scenario, I've created the face almost last, which I never, I never typically do. I always kind of take my time uh, in the beginning to kind of make a face because the face usually allows me to um, when the face is right I'm more comfortable doing everything else but when the face is off um, it looks weird and the face is obviously something you have to understand with anatomy so like the nose structure you can see right here You have to understand these things when you're doing anatomy. For his mouth, probably create, I'd use a sculpt draw and then I would use control right around here. And I would go down. And the mouth I know right off the bat. Right off the bat, I understand when I'm creating a mouth that it's gonna be changed. Uh, the mouth is an object that no matter how much time I put into it, I know that it's going to be changed. And over here you can see that I'm just sculpting in um, part of the mouth. Just like so. Sculpting in the bottom part. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating the place where I can start essentially putting the muscles of the bottom lip in creating that spot where um, I could put in those and it'll fit good with the top of the lip. And I'm just pushing this in, so pushing this in. But we'll get to that in the next video. All I'm gonna do is start rounding it off. So in the next session, we're gonna start focusing on, start rounding this off just a little bit. So I pull this back. Start fixing the head shape a little bit better than how it looks now. Next video, we'll go more into depth on creating um, the anatomy of this character because we have to do his legs and we have to get into general shapes of his face. But for this session, we got you know basically his upper body all all finished. Looks really weird right now, but don't worry about that. It will be fixed, I promise. <laughs> I promise. So, um, basic shapes uh, in here. So we have the abdomen, the abdomen wall coming in to the lats, the scapula, the spine coming down. Um, probably put a little more detail, honestly, um, when creating his lower back. And then if you if you are creating like a realistic character for maybe like a game, um, you would start creating maybe skin folds. Skin folds down here to replicate the skin kind of coming down. It's back and then you have his hip bone coming in. Just like that. And then you have his glutes. You know, you can define these or you can keep them. I, I usually tend to like defining the character's glutes. Because guys have butts too, girls aren't the only ones who have butts. Um, and I tend to try to define them, not like sculpt in, because unless your character is going to be naked in game, uh, you're not going to really see the glutes, but you will see them in his silhouette. So I tend to like define them pretty well. And 
know, we kept them very kind of um, realistic looking. His arms might be a little too big, I would say, but that's fine, I guess. And his shoulders are a little popped out. But like I said, it's touches. I'm um, just trying to get you down to the base shape of everything, just like I was saying with the back. You want to create the back where it's kind of going inwards into the spine so the muscles are popping outwards and then you get to this point where in the middle of it it looks like that it traps on his neck um, we'll get more into that into the next video uh, and the muscles around his neck we didn't really get into we'll probably can uh, finish that up when we're doing his head and then like I said the legs we didn't even start so we're gonna get finished with the basic let's save this we didn't even save this uh, I'm going to just call it sculpting video. So we're going to try to finish this up, um, this character up, just for the basics of anatomy within the next video. And then from there, we're going to start getting into working on other things to kind of take our skill from sculpting to kind of the next level. So I hope that you guys learned something uh, from this. I hope you did because we kind of went over anatomy pretty well here um, on this little test dummy character that we modeled out sculpted out so in the next session we'll finish him up and then we'll start getting into like you know maybe finer details and such thank you guys so much for watching um, i hope that you guys enjoyed my name is steven davidian and have a hey there guys my name is steven davidian and welcome back to another session um, in this session we're going to be actually focusing on finishing up this character we created uh, so let's just get right into it let's not waste any time um, so in the last session we've been going over just basic anatomy. I've been trying to stress the value of it and what it brings to the table when you are sculpting. So this is not a course to kind of show you how to create the high fidelity asset, the greatest asset of all time. This is a course to kind of show you um, the practices you should take and how you should go about um, sculpting. So. Uh, the ways I go about it, I've already said it, but to, to reiterate it is I, I create these these um, these meshes in a very fast kind of way, you know. So if I was creating a character, say, for a project, for a piece, for a game I'm working on, for clients, uh, I would tend to start off with a base mesh and I would go into a base sculpt. And I would, I would reiterate a couple of versions of this that I'm doing right now. Um, and I, I stay with the clay brush. And you can see that I stay with it. This is what I build with. Um, yeah, I do use a grab to move things around. By all means, of course, grab brush is amazing. I'm not trying to take that away from anything. But to build things, I stay with one brush typically. Um, and that's kind of how I go about it till I get into like any sort of detailing phase. You can say that you can see already this is a very very clean mesh um, right off the bat. Uh, not a clean, I'm sorry, but a very very readable mesh. Like this is a character that that's muscular that can you know, maybe can fit in an army game or like uh, it can fit kind of anywhere in any civilian kind of way. It doesn't look abnormal by any means. Uh, so we're gonna start getting on the face too, by the way. So uh, like into the lips, and I kind of want to stop what I'm saying to kind of go over how we're gonna get into the lips. So we're gonna draw the muscles that kind of connect into the lips. Okay, these muscles connect here. They create that baggage under your your, uh, your lip. So they create that baggage, and then they curl out to like right about there. Okay, so to create this kind of baggage and to curl out, and then you know I'm gonna push the top of the lip up, and then underneath here we create this circle look effect, and just focus, 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 focus on the anatomy. Like I said, look at. Uh, let me pull out one of my charts. Uno seconds. So you can see uh, this is on a girl, but that's fine. 
You can see over here how these muscles are caving in on the top and bottom of the lips and this part that brings up the chin caves in. You don't want to sculpt this by any means. You know, you don't want to sculpt like these strands and so unless you, you know, it would definitely help in the long run. But right now you don't you definitely don't need to sculpt any like muscle strands or or anything along that matter just because like like I said skin goes on top of all of these things. So you're going to be you have to create these these layers of skin um, that are going to cover all of that anatomy, but that that does help because you you start having a great understanding on how the facial construction of a face uh, of a like man's or woman's face looks, uh, and when you are doing that, you have like such an underlying grip of how a guy will look that. Now you can like almost do anything at your disposal since you you have that. So it's not like a it's not like a waste to do by any means, but I'm just saying like you can't learn that and just be like oh that's it I'm done. You know you have to learn about putting the skin and smoothing it and creating like nice folds and making sure it looks good and it reads well and stuff like that. That's the hard stuff. As you get better, you know, that stuff will come for sure. Okay. I'm going to start rounding out the mouth more. This is something that you, you know, I was I was saying with the body, same with the mouth. You kind of have to stress this. The mouth is not flat. The round piece, the face itself is round. And I like stretching these, pulling these back. Smooth all this. Go to the clay strips brush. And yeah, I'm just basically creating that muscle right here. To and like I said, I'm not gonna go into creating, you know, a high fidelity freaking lip or anything. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it I'm gonna keep it basic, but I'm just going and showing you how how I would do that, you know. Crease brush, push these in. And now, towards the top of the lip, right here, the top of the lip tends to get a little bit thicker right here, right? And then you have this hole, it kind of parts into your nose, almost. So it's like a hole. I didn't even get started on the nose yet, but let me like roughly start building out shape for this. It's hard to kind of do a character in this amount of time. So it shapes into the hole and then we just build, keep building out the roughness of it. And then, you know, your lip will come out, have this part towards the middle, you know. Like I said, make the middle part of this where it meets a little bit thicker than normal. And then part it out and then have it come down to wherever you feel like the lip needs to lie. So if it should lie like right around here, bring it down to right there, you know. And then start filling it in a little and look at it from another angle and flatten some things out fill maybe part of the bottom of it to fill out his lip same with the bottom of his lip you know start start thicken, thickening this start flatting things out I like to use a scrape brush here to start like almost like cleaning everything up just like that Control Z that just scrape the top of his lip up just a little bit start cleaning everything up basically That's how I go about starting off my lips Push these down you can use a pinch brush To pinch the corner of his lips and then pinch his lips together honestly And it's just like a back and forth of now creating curvature in the mouth So how the mouth reads you want to create curvature Roundness maybe push this up and smooth it. You don't want that to be defined by any means Then you get the clay strips brush and then you create You know a set of lips of your choosing And then you create this under piece It connects into the chin So I'll start creating the chin bone now The chin is slightly you can kind of see how the chin falls right here you see how the chin comes into place. 
All right, just like that. And you know, if you keep just looking at these charts and these pictures, you just keep looking at them, it's, it's gonna just come to you. You're gonna just realize like, oh, that's how you create lips. Oh, that's, cause you can't, you can't do, I can't stress it enough that you can't do it in your head. It's impossible. It is impossible. Like, even if there's somebody that says, you know, my mental memory is 100%, I know how to draw lips in my head. Yeah, you can. Absolutely, I believe you. You know, very, very well-known artists, I'm sure they can. But it's just, it, you will 100%, without a doubt, be better if you're looking at something. You don't gain anything from not looking at it. That's what I'm trying to say. So definitely look and look and research. And in the beginning, oh my gosh. I remember as I started. So right now also, let me explain. Let me not go down memory lane. I'm creating the cheekbone right here on the sides of his cheek. And I'm going to start kind of shaving down to where his nose is also. Now the nose comes out, right? And the eyes go in. So you, you cave those eyeballs in. The nose comes out. So push out this nose. You get the brow bone coming down, just like that. Start shaving down these cheeks. I guess something like that. Like I said, we're not get we're not getting into finished finished product zone. Kind of staying more on creating a clean product, I mean a, a rough product that you can kind of gauge and be able to create a you know a well refined one after. Like this shouldn't be your final product whatsoever. I'm just pulling in his eyes now very deeply. And I'll probably push in right here to kind of bridge the gap in between the nose. Go back to my clay strips. This is how I kind of go about creating a nose. You know, kind of just very roughly push things out. I'll focus in, create the bulbous tip of it, and I'll come and I'll create two tips on the side. Now it'll look really harsh, I know, but we'll, we'll make it look clean, trust me. Just like that. Flatten out the bottom, get the sculpt draw, and we'll draw two holes underneath the, the bottom of his lips just to gauge how it's going to look. And we'll start smoothing out things and, you know, making things smaller and such to kind of get a general idea of how the nose is starting to look. And you can kind of gauge right now that it's starting to look more like a nose, you know. And if you want to maybe make like a, a bump towards the middle, towards the top of it or whatever, you know, you can do that and keep it kind of flattened. Go back. Oof, that's a harsh bump. Jesus Christ, come on. Okay. I'll pull that out. Push this in. Pushing his face in. Now with his eyes, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull his eyes back just like that. I'm pushing his face in as I'm doing this. Okay. Now his nose is pronounced. He has a bigger nose. Uh, so I'm going to soften the tip of his nose up. And I'll start, I'll start like kind of creating a swoop almost. And then for his brow, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to create his eyebrows right here. I'm going to make them bigger, and then I'm going to cut his nose in just like that. I'm going to create a harsher brow bone, so on the side profile, it doesn't look flat. You know, see how it's creating more of a harsher look? So it doesn't look flat on the side. His eyes and such, but that is for... That is for another video and another time. It's because we do not have the time to do something like that. To be honest, I think the mouth is is a little bit too um, detailed for, for what I would be doing uh, in this stage. I think I went one, one or two steps a little farther than what I should have with the mouth. I 
I don't want any sort of smooth. You can see the face has fidelity in it. It's very smooth and it looks good. I'm gonna start connecting his cheek into his nose kind of and then bringing that down to his cheekbone. I don't want his jaw to look too sharp and clean. I kind of want him to have a softer jaw. Even though people with low body fat have a, a ridiculous jawline, I don't really want him to have um, harsh like edges around his jaw. Now, just for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna create um, the eyeballs and go into uh, creating eyelids and stuff because that is that is detail, and we're not doing detail within this video. We're trying to do anything we can but detail. So what I will do actually is um, roughly get the ear out here. So um, create right around his eye level, right behind his jaw. You know, we'll create the ear. So right around there. That is kind of where you want the ear placement to be. Like I said, we're gonna do it very, very rough. It's not gonna look perfect by any means but you know we're gonna create something that we can start off with usually I create you know that shape and I'll start building right because the ear kind of comes outwards so this is how I do ears like I said there's a million and a half ways to do everything this is just how I go about creating my ears so I'll keep building up I'll look on the side I'll be like oh that's not big enough I'll keep building I'll keep going up and down that curves in a little. I'll keep going up and I'll look on the side. Oh, that's not big enough. And I'll keep going and creating this geometry to make the ear pop out. Come to the side. No, not really. What you could do is masks also. You can create the mask. But, you know, I don't want to do that. It's because you have to pull out everything and, you know, some things get ugly and messy and you have to kind of merge it back into the ear and stuff. And, that's not a process I like doing, so. I like kind of going very quickly. I probably should use a sculpt draw in this situation to, to create fast ways to bring this out. You know, I'm using the sculpt draw also right now to push in these sides of the ear. Okay, so something like this would be good for just a for the beginning part of it, you know? Okay, I'll go back to the clay strips. Start caving in parts of his ear. I'll start flattening some things. I'll start creating his ear lobe. So the lobe of his ear. People tend, uh, their ear doesn't just stay flat towards the bottom. You know, they have a lobe. I'll just grab, use a grab tool and try to grab this down. No need to like build up that mass. We just did that. I'm not too worried. I just want the shape of the ear to be generally what I want. Like if you have concept art or reference art of how the character's ear looks, just focus on creating the shape of the ear to the best of your ability. Don't focus on, uh, in this stage, the beginning stages on creating, you know, every little single piece of, you know, muscle that's going into the ear, ligament that's going into the ear, all the cartilage and stuff. You don't focus on that right now. You just focus on creating the general ear. I'll just hollow this out. And then I'll probably come in. And like I said, this is something you would probably want to definitely, definitely have an anatomy for. Like, you don't want to do this yourself by any means. So, all, you, all I would say is have some sort of anatomy. Have different charts like this. Uh, the ear comes around, uh, meets up, you know, or just grab a mirror and look at your own ear. By all means, you don't got to be shy to do that. You know, if you're creating some sort of warrior character or something, and you know, look at references of ears you need to you should need to you know you shouldn't you shouldn't think you're good enough not to even if you're a professional okay so 
So in these stages, I would start saying like, hey, this is this is kind of good. You know, what am I? What else do I have to? The ear is readable. Inside of it is kind of wacky and fugazi right now, but like it is readable nonetheless. You know, probably do some cleanup underneath the tip of it right here. Start flattening this out and then kind of at this bulb you create this muscle that you know comes around the earlobe and it's hard to get relative detail in here when you're blocking off because the ear is a detailed part of the body you know and you don't want to get into ridiculous detail same with the eyes the eyes is, is, is a very detailed part of the body and you don't want to be getting into like ridiculous detail in these stages so it's hard to kind of create that balance you just want to get a general shape sometimes I'll just pull out also I'll just pull out the ear right now I'm using the crease brush on the bottom and the top of this crease all of this out I'll smooth this out right here just because it's smooth you know there's a smooth edge right there uh, but sometimes I'll just use I'll just pop the ear out you know get the shape that I want pop it out and be like all right that's it um, that's it I'm done for for now for this part because you know there's no need into into wasting the time and going over all of this stuff because I already know that you know this is the size of the ear this is how I want it to look essentially the detail will come but for right now I don't really need anything else so I usually would stop um, I wouldn't go as far as this right now I'll tell you that typically Head shape, very clean, very nice. You know, back of the head, you could maybe maybe add an indentation. You can come in here and also add hair by any means. Like if you wanna create a nicer looking head and add maybe hair to them, but I typically like to uh, make it look uh, bald in the beginning. And if the character needs hair, I'll, you know, by all means I'll create hair for him. So eyes would be nice for this character. And we'll see if we can create them um, after we get into the legs. Because I don't want to miss out. Like, I don't want to focus on eyes, right? Because we have a face that, you know, looks okay right now. I don't want to focus on eyes of a character when, you know, right here is just... Like, where is it? There's nothing else. There's no... Um, sorry. So there, there's no... Um, there's no legs. This is ridiculous. So I want to focus on creating the legs. And we're going to get into just that by, okay, first let's define the knees, you know, roughly. You know, this is where generally our knee point would be, right? You know, you can smooth that out. This is kind of where our knee point would be. I'd shave the bottom of it and then I'll shave the top of it. That's our knee. Um, let me just, for example, just because just because this is not a video for, for me to show you how to essentially make a character, this is a video showing you the examples and the processes of what I would take to create this character. Um, this is how generally a quad would look like, a quadricep. You would have these two muscles, you don't have to worry about all these intersecting muscles. Um, you have these, these two muscles that are kind of leaning, that are coming outwards, that sweep your leg. You have the muscle that's in the middle that's connecting right into your knee. Uh, and it creates this, these, these three most dominant muscles create this effect that are almost like this. I'll show you, I'll show you it um, kind of excessively. So um, as you read the charts, let me throw it one more time. You can see right here on the chart. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse or not. I don't think you can see my mouse. Um, but you can see the rectus rectus femuris I, I don't know the names I can't read the names it's confusing but the middle part the left side and the right side of those sweeps um, are the most dominant so the part that's connecting into the middle right here that goes up to the high thigh the part that's connecting to the left right here and the part that's kind of sweeping which is the lowest part 
that connects to the lowest part of your knee that sweeps the, the, the side of your leg like this. These are the three most dominant muscles of the quad. And now I'm kind of emphasizing them. And they all connect. So right here, I kind of messed up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit control right here and I'm going to kind of fade out all that mass. And they all connect. I'm going to scale this down to one, one middle part. Okay. We're all connecting to the upper thigh. So they're not going like, you know, it's not going up here or anything. They're all connecting right there. Okay. And that's how you create that effect. Quad muscles are really, really big muscles. In bodybuilders, you can see within those quadricep muscles, in the, the front pose, the side pose, they, they have different insertions on each of the muscles. Some people have insertions that are closer to the knee. So like, um, you know, say this is the kneecap, you know, it would be like right around here, the insertions. All right, and then I probably this one comes the least out. Some people have insertions that are farther, you know, that most bodybuilders, since they're genetically gifted, have have them closer to the kneecap. So right around the kneecap, it's almost like a teardrop that's falling down. Just like so. And I'm doing this very, very roughly and very, very quickly. Just like so. So it's almost like a teardrop falling down. That what that's what essentially makes up the um, side of the, the front side of the um, leg is that quadricep. And over here on this side, come in. You can see. I said you follow the anatomy you know and you look at it enough and you have to look at different you have to look at different anatomy that's the main thing that that will kind of make your models feel more immersive and different if you have different styles of anatomy coming almost together um, into your models that's what I feel like will make your models stand out same with the hamstring. Hamstrings are just strings of muscles. And these muscles get very, very tight. For people that sit or stand all day, these muscles can get very tight and very strenuous. They're just strings of these strings of muscles. Let me pull out an image uh, for you guys. Uh, let me just pull this out so you guys can see. And, you know, the, just Google these muscles. Google an entire anatomy chart. And you'll, you'll essentially find out. So it's these strings of muscles that are coming from the back of your leg all the way to the bottom of your glutes. Okay, they're wrapping around towards your kneecap to the bottom of your glutes. That's what the hamstrings essentially consist of. So it's these muscles. Ooh, I don't want to click anything wrong. Oh, I took the standard brush. It's these muscles that are coming from the back of your legs just like so, that are going all the way to the rim of your glutes, the bottom edge of these glutes. They're meeting at that point. And you're not gonna draw each individual striation and each individual muscle. You kinda wanna smooth it out, make it look nice, uh, just because you don't want it to look very harsh and rough. So, same with, same with the quadriceps. I'm not gonna keep it exactly like this. I'm going to start smoothing them out. And if I look at it from another angle, I'll probably start um, creating uh, creating some depth to the muscle. Start, you know, creating some uh, lines in there. Very subtly, you know, nothing crazy. Because like I said, if you do have very defined quads, if you work out legs, stuff like that, um, you will see the muscle. You know, by all means, you'll see it. It's a big muscle. So I don't want to kind of hide it. You know, it's not a muscle you want to hide because it's a very defined muscle. Even in, even in average people that, you know, work out legs a lot, it's a muscle that's defined, you know, that you can see. 
Hamstring is a little harder to have very, you can have thicker hamstrings. People who work out their hamstrings tend to have thicker hamstrings, but it's a very hard muscle to kind of um, see the, the strands of muscle fibers in. And like I said, if you're creating a upper body that's thick, right? Let's save this entire project. Give me one second. Okay, awesome. For creating an upper body that's generally thick, you have to kind of mimic the lower body or else he's gonna look like a tornado. And you don't want that with your character. You don't want him to look unproportioned, unless, you know, that is a style, of course. Uh, Cause like in, in a lot of kind of games and styles, I, I do see like, you know, skinny, like very skinny legs and such. So I can definitely see that being a style. Same with the calf muscle. So the calf muscle is just essentially these muscles on the back of your legs. You know, that hurt a lot if you work them out. And they're these thick muscles that essentially, I'm just kind of carving off. We're not gonna get into toes and fingers in this session. Um, we're kind of staying more towards the books on like hands. Uh, I mean, not hands, the, the anatomy of the legs and the anatomy of the face. Okay, just kind of rounding these out. I don't want his feet to look weird. Round the back of his foot out and then bring it out a little bit. Me say I'm not going to model out toes. Oh, no, no, it would take too long just because... Um, It would take too long, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I'll, I'll kind of kind of try to get a general, a general split into the toe. Kind of show you guys how you would create it. His toes are his feet are very easy to do. Retopologizing them are a bit harder, but feet are generally easy to do. Uh, you don't really have a huge problem with it. You just create individual toes and. You separate them. If you read to, if you have a base mesh that has the toes already separated, that is just more the merrier. I mean, that just makes it easier on you. Um, if you do have to separate it by by sculpting, then then it's a little bit harder. But you know, like I said, if you're not getting into detail on on them, and you're creating the toes. Um, as just a base to kind of see, creating the feet as a base to kind of see, you know, how it's going to look with your mesh, then it's very easy to do. When you get into detail though, toes are, toes are something you want to, you know, not neglect. So I'm just going to, I'm going to keep it at one toe right now. I don't want to go into every single toe. I'll keep it at one little, one little toe. Because I do want to get into the the calf muscle here. So the calf muscle is a very dominant muscle. Um, if you're making maybe like a, hero a heroic character, you want to create kind of bigger calf muscles in the leg. And I would say even thicker muscles, um, a thicker leg, like a root of the leg, like this. So, because you can't have the calf muscle be thick without the root of the leg being necessarily thick itself. So I would probably pull pull some pieces out of his leg and create a thicker entire leg from the root of it. Just like so. Now this is definitely, you can tell proportionally, it is unproportional. <laughs> definitely have to size the size of it down. And we can even bring the, the muscle size of it down too. So the insertion where it's inserting in to the leg, we can bring that down too. Uh, let's hit five and three. And we can bring this foot down just like so. Like I said, I don't wanna get too into depth on these feet. Uh, we can get more towards of the ankle part of his feet in. 
You don't want this guy to look like he has kinkles. So when you are, yeah, just if you're sculpting, say, feet, right? Uh, hands, feet. Uh, you can look at your own, you know? You can look at your own feet, how, how the bones kind of come out, how the ligaments, how certain ligaments pop out, how certain ligaments don't pop out. Um, and you can kind of feel, feel that out. Just like that. Now I'm doing it very fast and very roughly, but you know, you can take your time into it and create, you know, very well, very polished feet. Because feet are important too. Uh, Typically, if, if you're creating character and say it's for like a, say it's for your own game. Um, if you maybe have customization in your game and maybe the character doesn't start with shoes, um, that would be more of a perfect example to, to create and sculpt out, you know, very nice feet. Maybe if it's a survival game or in the beginning of the game, you, you have nothing and then you have to loot up to create, uh, to survive, that would be a perfect idea. Um, to creating feet. Um, creating feet is also good just for the base to, to kind of level out how the shoe is going to fit on. You don't want to just create a shoe. Yeah, right now this is not, it's not looking, it's not looking the best. Now you can see I'm using the scrape tool to kind of clean up the calf a little. Because we don't, we can define the calf muscle. So we can define it like up here as it comes up to the um, outer part of his side. It comes in. So if we define it like such, we push it out and it comes into the back of his knee like that. And same with the other part. So it's going to come in and, you know, you can create more of an outer ridge to kind of see the effect of it coming in. You know, I'm going to keep building up some effect here it out and then same with this part this part comes out and it connects to the outer uh, the back knee where the knee is and then yeah that, that's basically how the cab is consistent of what the cab is consistent of and over here in the front you can maybe create create some fuck some effects All right. Okay. This is looking really good. Just creating some more muscle here that, you know, you can smooth out. Me, like I said, I like, I like the effect. For some reason, my eyes at this point, I read it better when it's messier for some weird reason. I don't know why it's like that, but I read the mesh better when it's kind of populated with polygons and it's all messy and it looks all weird and such. Uh, in my head, I'm reading it. I'm reading it in a specific way, I guess that I've already interpreted like over a million times. So um, for me, it's that's the best way to read it. But I understand for most people, the majority. Um, they're like, no, 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 that's not, I like it smoothed I like, I like how it looks like all clean and stuff. I don't like all these, these stroke brushes. And for, for 3D sculpting, now you can just see I'm adding, adding volume to what is already there. And then I'll take away and I'll smooth out volume. And we're, we're kind of going into a little more detail now. You know, we're creating, we're creating more detail opposed to staying with the, staying with the same old, same old. And we're, we're, we're kind of trying to add a little more uh, contrast and harsher edges and build up uh, certain part of, parts of the mesh. So you can see towards the back, um, his spine, you know, smooth that out and add these, these parts that's going to create a nice looking mesh. But um, what was I saying? 
I was gonna say, as a as a two D artist, um, you you do get a, a lot more. You know, the gap to learn is a lot less when you are a two D artist. I would say, and I am not. I am not a two D artist by any means. So, um, just knowing how to draw in two D. Um, usually, people who draw in two D, they they typically like understand the third dimension. They understand like depth and how to make things look and they can take especially if you're a very good 2d artist you can take a a piece of paper and make it feel like like wow this, is, this has depth to it and like this is immersive like it's so cool especially very good 2d artists like um i don't follow too many but like i there is a couple i follow on like instagram and such that they they make um, depth like ridiculous you know they make it to the point where it looks like wow like this doesn't even look 2d anymore like this is ridiculous this is amazing so okay I'm just adding a couple more touches you can see I'm just going over and over and over and adding touches maybe some more muscles in the neck that come up so these muscles they come up to almost to the back of the ear I see it like back here in his back, his traps. And you see it from this angle that they, they do look excessive. But from the front angle, they look good. But from this angle, you can see they look excessive. And you want everything to look good at, at every angle. At every angle you're creating something, you need it to look good. So if it looks weird in one angle, you're going to have to improvise and create and like alter it to create it and make it look nice at almost you know essentially every angle so that you create the Adam's apple for his neck underneath his chin you can maybe concave it or if he's like more of a chubbier guy you can start connecting his chin to you know so it's not so defined and then you can probably pull his chin down also just a little bit Start pushing some features in. Face. Save that. Control S. Oh my god, I just shook my entire desk. That's not good. Okay. Well, yeah, that, that is very rough <laughs> right now. <laughs> that is very rough right now. So I will do a quick overpass of smooth. Just because... Um, you guys would be like, wait, this is supposed to be a sculpting video. This looks horrible. So I, w I would want you guys to see the shape a little. I can read the shape like this, but that doesn't necessarily mean everyone can read shape like this when it's all messy and stuff. And I don't necessarily think that's a good way to work, but I work like that. So uh, I'm not going to teach like that, but that's how I work. I kind of work like with it. Um, generally always always messy till the end where I read to apologize it kind of after I find like a good way and then I, I go into my multi-resolution um, till that point I'm like always in uh, a messy workspace almost see how the face is smooth and stuff I'm, I'm not really like um, I'm not really working with like that much smoothness till I get to that to that point where I, I feel comfortable enough that like, all right, I like this mesh. I'm comfortable with it. I feel like I I have a, a good base and then I can, you know, start working more in smoothness and, you know, like I said, detail and stuff like that. But for the beginning, no, 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 I can't. There's something in me. I like working very rough and dirty and I don't like, uh, I'm gonna push this nose in a little bit. I don't like falling in love with my uh, model, my sculpts, because uh, it'll just hurt when you have to kill them. Like when you have to say like, "Oh, this isn't working." I don't want to have to keep a sculpt just because I'm like, "Oh my god, like it looks so good." I think, but I just feel like structurally it's not working. If I have it rough like this. Um, I know it's not working and I can just say, you know what, like, this is not working, you know, we can just call it here. We don't have to drag it out. So that's why I kind of work very roughly so I can say, 
whenever I want. Oh, uh, this is it. This is it's done. And I can kind of go off that. Okay, now I'm just creating this gap for his lip. All this stuff is rough, and I'll probably create these for his cheeks. I said this is more detail oriented stuff, but. And I'll do quick, I guess, uh, how much time do we have? 44 minutes. I'll do a quick um, eye. So let's add a UV sphere. Scale that down. Hit five on our keyboard for the front or the graphic. And this is something that we are gonna have to rush a little. So this is not 100%. Um, Perfect, but like we're gonna scale this and push this down and we'll push this in. Find a good spot for him. Probably right around there, I would say. Scale it right around there. Then I'll duplicate it. I don't think it's gonna work perfectly in the same duplicated spot. I'll delete that. I'll, I'll focus on one eye for right now. Um, let's let's try to do it quick as quick as we can. Let's turn on dyno topology And then this is something like I said remember when I was talking about the lips I'm gonna start curving out the mouth actually a little more I was talking about the lips and I was like when I create lips I Generally I know off the bat. I'm gonna be working in um, More than one attempt same with the eyelids. When I'm creating eyelids, I know for a fact that it's not gonna be in one attempt. So once I've established that it's not gonna be in one attempt, I understand the first one I create, you know, is most likely gonna go in the trash 99% of the time. So eyelid goes as, goes as the same thing. When you're creating the eyelid, um, the biggest thing to make sure is to make sure that it is around just like how the mouth is round, the eyelid is also round. So you wanna make sure, um, you know, it's fitting around this sphere. Smooth all this stuff out, pull this out, push it in. An actual human eye, you know, it's not, it's not like that anime style or anything like that. It's kind of um, thinner. It doesn't have those big bulbous protruding um, eyes, they're kind of more shut down and closed, they kind of meet at a point like such. And you know, this is just a, like I said, with the ears, this is this is this is just a rough start. This is not going to be like this is how you make an eye tutorial. This is just how I roughly start with uh, the eye. So I start with the bottom lid. And I build up the form. Once I've created a decent amount of bottom lid, you know, I'll kind of connect it and then I'll go on to the top of the lid. Actually, I'm gonna push all of this inwards. I'm gonna push towards his brow. I'm gonna push that part inwards. We'll restructure his brow. So it gives, gives us some room to create the top of his lid now. You know? Just like such. Usually, uh, the top of a uh, human's eyelid is is farther up than the bottom. So, if we hit three, uh, push this out a little more. I like working with one eyelid too. It's, oh no, you can shut it off. You can just hit backspace and work with work with it off. But it's nice to have one eye here that I could see the inside of it, and then I could come over here and see how it looks with it on, that's cool. So now I'm just connecting these, these eyelids together very roughly. The eyelids are something you have to, you have to get in and create it. Um, let's control Z that, that was a little rough. The eyelids is kind of like the ear when you have to get in and you have to create it with detail. Um, it's typically not created uh, roughly, but there you do use big shapes to kind of 
um, get the look you're going for. So you create it with shapes, but um, sorry, I'm just trying to push these down, push these up. That's why I'm kind of stuttering on my words. <laughs> use a pinch brush here to pinch the side of it. And then we'll use the mask tool. We're gonna mask the top of this eyelid now. Dun, dun, dun. Now we're gonna push the bottom of it up. So we'll mask the top just like so. We'll con control I to invert. Actually, no, 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 uh, control I again. Sorry about that. We'll hit G. I'm gonna push this eyelid up. Okay, and then we'll push it in just like so. Make sure when you push it in though, you're keeping, oh, we hit the nose a little. Make sure when you push it in, you're keeping the sphere shape of the lid. So, you know, keeping, I'm pushing these in, pulling these out, keeping that sphere shape. And you can all M. It's gonna look a little janky right now, but we'll fix it like, yeah, over here. Looks a little weird. We'll fix all of that. That's nothing. Uh, we're actually gonna create a lower detail to kind of get into these edges a little bit better. And like I said, I'm not gonna get into the creating the, the eye fully because I can't do that in like 15 minutes. Uh, nah, I'm not that good. That's, I don't I don't think I'm good at all. But like, uh, I'm not that skilled at sculpting to where like I know how to create the anatomy of an eye in that amount of time. I wish, uh, I know how to create the anatomy, I'm, excuse me, not the, the detail of an eye in that amount of time is what I'm looking for. Pushing this up. Now all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna switch to my sphere. And I feel like our sphere is too down. So I'm gonna pull our sphere out more like so. Let's see if we scale the sphere up to fill the eye more and then we push it back in. And we pull it in like that. I think that fits a lot better. I feel like now we have so much more room. It felt like the eye was caved in there and we didn't have any room to like play with it and move it around. Now I feel like we have a lot of room to kind of play with it and uh, you know move the eyelid around without kind of having that space in between the eye where you can't where you can kind of see inside of the lid. Right here I'm going to use a crease but on the opposite action by hitting control to create some sort of ridge. Um, around the eye, some sort of lid almost around the eye. Over here, I'm going to crease out, create this lid. And then with the brow, so with the brow, you can start feeling the brow that it's too emphasized. You know, it's sticking out now because we pushed it out and we moved it out. That's, oh, okay, let's control Z really quick. That's fine, because we'll start smoothing this out. We're not working with dino topology anymore, just because with the face, we have enough topology, uh, as is. We don't need to go um, in. Just with that eyelid detail, we just needed to lower it from what it was, just a little, uh, because, you know, you're sculpting in an eyelid, you know? So, you want to kind of put some detail in in there but like you have enough at this point let's go back to sculpt and my keyboard is really far away from my my pen tab at the moment and it, it's hurting moving <laughs> okay now probably the Probably these sides of the eyes right here. So these sides, probably they're lit a bit too outwards. And I would fix that in just by, you know, moving it in just a little bit. And then you could probably move the eye too inwards. But like I said, I don't want to get too into 
uh, modeling the eye. I didn't even think I was going to model the eye in this tutorial series, but because I just didn't think we had enough time to go over to basics. But you can kind of get an idea of the basics of what we did in fifth, around like 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to just create the eyelids for a more realistic human. You know, their, their eyelids aren't like so predominant and huge. Uh, they're kind of more laid inwards just like so so I'm going to use a grab tool at a, at a lower um, diameter and just push these inwards and kind of start fixing out the eyelids and such now if I were to get into detail it starts shaping um, shaping it out a little better so it's like an actual human eye how, how this goes out a little and then these pinch in and then you have that piece that goes right around here what's this piece called I don't, I'm not gonna even try to like name it. Uh, check on dino topology because I'm not gonna be able to create that piece uh, from faces only activated and yeah, you can tell there's a lot of a lot of tension right there in the polygons. Okay. I'm using the sculpt draw brush now to kind of pop out these eyelids. I'll go over it with the smooth. And now you can, after the, you know, these are, you know, emphasized and you have them, what you can do is you can go in and now you can start scraping them down. So, you know, I can come in here with the scrape brush and start scraping them down because you don't have like a predominant eyelid like that, that there's like a shell falling over like that. It's not that predominant. So what I would do is I would come in here and I would just use a scrape brush and just go down with it and smooth it out like such, just like that. Yep, perfect. And maybe highlight the cheekbone. Then you can, you can do it. You can spend days on this stuff, guys days just on an eye there has been times where i've spent like over a week on a face you know and if you break that into parts you know you know there's not too many parts of a face that takes like so much time you can already see with the lips right here that you know the lips don't adjust fit perfectly smooth that out Push that down and I'd start pushing these in. And you know, you are fine. Now, since we have the basic details, let's smooth that out. Since we have the basic detail right here, right? You know, we have the basic muscle structure and everything. We have all of this, it's all set. I'm gonna save this. Um, let me not crash Blender really quick. <laughs> You just see how we're doing on time. Uh, we've got to wrap up in a second. We have all the basic muscle structure, the chest, the bicep, tricep, the back, the lats, the scapula, the traps, uh, abdomen wall, the quadricep, the hamstrings. We thickened them. We didn't define them too much. Um, the feet are a little winky. I'm not going to lie. We definitely, uh, if I had enough time, I would go over sculpting feet and kind of finalizing them. Just because this is a uh, a best practices video and not like how to create a certain type of character, um, I'm not gonna like go into it and, and, and finalize, unfortunately. Just because, like I said, I w wouldn't have the time to teach you um, like you know tricks about everything because I would have to focus on creating you know making sure the hands look nice and stuff. I wouldn't have wouldn't have time to like stop in the middle of creating you know the tricep or the lat and focus on explaining to you guys like oh this is how you go about creating it and such but uh you know all in all the eyes i'm just using the scrape brush by the way right now guys to to kind of you know flatten out parts of the mesh you know that you don't necessarily like you just flatten it out make it look a little cleaner because you guys probably like the cleaner look and this mesh is going to be given to you um, in the project files, so um, you're gonna be able to look at it and kind of analyze it as is. Uh, it's not a perfect mesh by any means, but you can be able to use it as a a reference to look at and see like 
you know, how you kind of go about creating these muscle groups and stuff. So, um, you just smooth out the rest and then, yeah, I don't want to get lost into doing this, but, um, that concludes this session, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you learned something in this session. We went over creating the face of this character. Let me get out of here. Let's go into the face. We focus on creating the face, and then, you know, let's not look at the feet. And we went into the legs, and we built up basic mass. We could have um, done more with the legs, but uh, we focused more on the face and, you know, finishing up the face and creating a a semi-realistic um, base sculpt of his face um, with the rest of his body. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really do appreciate it. Uh, my name is Steven Davidian, and I hope you guys have a good one. Hey there, guys. My name is Steven Davidian, and we're going to be actually focusing on detail today in this session. So we created this base mesh of this character, focusing on form. Uh, we're actually going to start focusing on detail now, opposed to getting into organic shapes and stuff, which we will do in next session. But in this session, we're going to be focusing on creating this guy uh, to the highest um, detail that we can, obviously in the time that we can do it. We can't just go in and you know, make all this detail in a short amount of time, but we're going to try. So let's get into sculpt mode. Use a clay strips brush. And we're gonna start smoothing out some stuff. We're gonna turn on, we're gonna keep dino topology off. We're gonna turn on symmetry. I'm gonna start smoothing out some stuff. Okay, like with his back and things like that. Okay. Okay, awesome. We're just trying to now make this character, this rough character, trying to make him kind of come to life a little bit more. Um, opposed to him being all messy and stuff, we want him to look a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, a little bit more um, ready for, for a game or whatever. Uh, so right now we're just smoothing with the, we're building up and smoothing with the clay strips brush without dino topology on. And we could turn on, we could turn on dino topology for a second to have smooth shading enabled. So we could see how it looks smooth opposed to like this flat shaded look that we currently have right now, which, you know, I kind of want to get rid of. That's why I'm turning this on. Okay, awesome. Now we can turn it off. I think it will stay if we turn it off now. Yeah, all right, cool. So. So you can tell it's now it's, it's looking a little bit better. Just that we put smooth shaded on, starting to look a little bit cleaner. And now, so what this video is doing here is, is it, it's going to be focusing on, you know, we created block off, but that isn't a complete mesh, you know, just block off. You have, you have to create other parts of that to make it a complete mesh. So. Um, you know, you have to have that finite detail if you want to be, you know, in a triple A company or something one day, you have to have that detail. And that's what I'm trying to kind of go for right now. I'm trying to go for that detail. Nothing crazy, you know. You don't want to overshoot and then have have nothing at all, like an ugly mesh. Uh, some people try to go over in detail and they end up with not having the, you know a nice clean mesh and that's kind of what we're going for here we're going for like a, a nice and clean styled mesh nothing crazy obviously okay hold on let me just grab my reference Okay. So having it just smooth it, to be honest, uh, is you already see the detail. Like you already can see the how much cleaner it looks. Just having it smoothed right off the bat, which is crazy. 
just going to push his eyebrows down because you see how his eyebrows are like aiming upwards. We don't want that. We need to push these down. So we need to push these eyebrows more aiming at a neutral position. We're not like aiming too much upwards, kind of flattened like that. You can see it gives him more of a natural look opposed to them aiming upwards like how he was doing before. And you can tell over here, um, at this point of, of modeling, you can tell him still changing things around. It's it's almost it's at the point of where I'm trying to detail things, and I'm still changing things around, and that is one of the benefits when you're working. Uh, when you're working by uh, uh, creating these shapes to create a nice base mesh, or not a base mesh, a nice um, uh, like the start of your skull. You don't want to get into detail because like as you get into detail you're going to realize I'm creating the under part of the lip right now to kind of separate it a little bit more from the chin. As you get more into detail you realize your beginning project isn't isn't what you expected. How you created like the mouth let's say in the beginning or how you created the eyes in the beginning isn't like how it's going to be you're going to expect it to be um, towards the end. So. I definitely, uh, I definitely, I'm pushing out the mouth right now to create a nicer shape. I definitely recommend you to, um, when you are sculpting, to create these sculpts with, um, with the thought in mind of I'm changing this most likely. And if you if you have that thought in mind, you your sculpts will turn out much better. Trust me. Like honestly, they will. You get a little closer to the mic just in case you guys can't hear me. Okay. I'm just sculpting out the nose a little better shape. Now this isn't like a final um, detail course. Like this is not like final production quality detail. It's just creating that extra layer, those secondary details now. Like we're not going in and gonna create skin pores and stuff like that, but we're creating that second layer of detail. Uh, to create, you know, a nicer looking effect. Okay. Just playing with some things now, creating creases in certain places. Uh, I'll probably use a crease brush right here to like pop out the lips a little bit by using um, control. Same with the bottom lip. I use a crease brush to pop out those lips. So let me look at this from the side. It's looking pretty good from this side. You could do a harsh jawline like this if you want. I like the softer jawline. I don't like him having like a harsh, um, a harsh jawline for some reason. Just for this character. I like it as a soft jawline, but you could just by using the crease tool. Now I'm gonna probably take down his trap muscles. Um, a little bit, nothing crazy, just a little bit. And I'll probably take down his neck muscles also. They're coming alongside his neck. Kind of smooth that out to give it a more natural look. Something like that. So we, want, we don't want this guy to look like insanely, almost fake looking. We want him to have some sort of like um, realisticness to him. Okay, so we have the scapula popping out. We have his delt popping out. We're not going to create any muscle, like insane muscle separation. We'll have our cuts within our tricep like this. But we're not going to create any like uh, ridiculous muscle separation. Uh, as I'm saying that, I'm creating muscle separation <laughs> between the tricep. Uh, just because... Um, We're keeping it more of like a, a, like somebody you can see almost like if you're just walking down the street. That's kind of what I have in mind with this character. So I want him to be, yeah, I want him to be jacked. Like his tricep is protruding. This is probably a little too much. I'll probably soften this a little. But 
I don't want him to have like striations everywhere and stuff like that. It's not my style. If that's if that's the style you're going for, if you need like a overly jacked character, then yeah, by all means. Like if you want like striations in his abs, like you know, coming down the side like that, just like that, like muscle striations. If you want that kind of stuff, I don't like that. So. You could. You can build those kind of objects up with the clay strips. You can build them up and then put them down. Now you can see that I'm not adding like necessarily detail. Like I wouldn't say this is detail. This is more just secondary shapes from our primary shapes. Like um, I'm cleaning things up and making them look a little bit better. Like, I'm not adding veins and stuff to my character. I'm just using what I have now at my disposal, what I've already created, and I'm using that to, um, you know, enhance how he looks. Because, you know, you want to reiterate your character as much as you can. I'm smoothing all this out. that up Let's move that out okay for his leg muscles we're gonna start actually creating a thicker muscle belly for his leg same with his quadricep and start creating a thicker muscle belly and we want to have some sort of um, sweep almost with his leg muscle at least so with his leg muscle we'll come up here, we'll create some sort of sweep that goes down his leg like so. Maybe it stops right there and then we'll fill this, we'll fill this out with the clay strips. But we want some sort of leg muscle kind of, kind of there. Same with the inner quad, so the quad on the side push that out now we're gonna probably we're probably pushing these out a little too much you know we'll probably have to scale them down but just getting a rough basic um, now we'll take this we'll come up just like that awesome okay I'm gonna start merging these, like make this muscle less prevalent. And kind of keep it like that. Okay. Now with the hamstring, what we're gonna do, let's just see, I don't want his legs to be overly big. We can, we can do adjustments towards the end. If we don't like it. And like, this is not necessarily detail, like a finite detail, like I was saying, it's more just creating on top of what we've already created, creating a, a better base. What I'm doing is I'm just now creating more of the hamstring uh, part of our leg. Maybe put some strings up there to make it look a little thicker. And I'm using control. Uh, control on our crease brush to kind of bring out some of these pieces just a little bit though nothing crazy I just want some uh, some sort of thickness so if I come over here you can see that it's pretty flat I just want some sort of thickness nothing crazy um, towards the top of the glutes And then I'll probably skim down towards the bottom, kind of thin it out. Same with the quadricep. You see the quadricep, how it's popping out towards the top? Probably get rid of that. Let's see how it's looking from the side view. And I'll start shaving it down a little bit. Like I was saying, I don't want him to be, um, I want him to be kind of realistic looking almost. Nothing crazy. Okay. 
and all of this is reference so all of this you're gonna want to look at reference for you know whether it's the kneecap these lats a little bit guy has some high lat insertions if you want you can bring them down you know you can just pull downwards like this to bring them down and then you can probably push out just like so this is a this is a good thing uh, to have T pose characters too just because you can see it's causing some sort of an issue when I'm trying to create uh, trying to create that back dynamic just because I can't now because his triceps there I would have to remove his arm hide it and then go back and create it okay smoothing this out like I said uh, for the 19th time <laughs> I, I don't want him to be like hyper real uh, hyper shredded I want it to be more uh, toning on the eyes. I'm just trying to make him look. So I'm looking at different angles right now. And I'm trying to make him, uh, my goal is to make him look um, presentable and clean from every angle. And I'm, I'm just going back and forth and, and I'm looking over here, I feel like his, his shoulder is a bit too popped out. You can see I'm getting away, I'm, I'm getting detailed um, away from his body. I'm taking detail away, but uh, that was one of the things I was mentioning about the skin, of when you create skin over your muscles. Like, your muscles aren't just strided muscles at all times, you have skin over it. And with that skin, you know, you're, it's gonna look like smooth and clean. And you don't want that. You don't want your muscles uh, on your character to be like super defined um, all the time. Like he's always flexed. Like, like you can see in the ab region. You know, smooth this out a little bit. In the ab region, yeah, he is. He is a little. He's a little too much. I'm not gonna lie. There is a little, little too much here. See, I'm pushing this down now, but it's not insane, you know. It, it is too much. I agree that, you know, it's probably more than the average person by all means. But I still think it's a little realistic, you know. Even though I feel like people can have abs like this just hanging out. They don't have to be flexed. Maybe not this is the fine, maybe if I go over it one more time with smoothing, and then maybe a, a, I would build down with the clay buildup, I think that would be more of a realistic tone. And I'm just doing very, very subtle um, strokes and then smoothing. I, I build something up, I smooth it down, and it's like I go and I repeat that process a couple times. And I just, I just keep on doing that, I don't try to um, I don't try too hard to do certain things. I just keep on building and you know repeat that process and I'll build again and I'll repeat the process and I'll build again and I'll repeat the process. It's not like a it's not a hard process. It's just you have to have the eye. Once you have an eye for it, um, it's fairly simple. You just you just find out places that are that you feel that are too too out there you know they're too shredded or or if you're creating a creature if you're creating say like a an orc you find places that it doesn't fit on his anatomy it doesn't maybe it looks too human like or you know maybe he looks too you know stupid looking instead of looking aggressive or it looks too kind and gentle it's like things like that soft things maybe on an orc you don't want that you want more hard edged things things like that would definitely sway your 
sway your opinion on uh, the model. And you would be able to fix it um, at a faster rate once you find out. Just creating the eyes now, a little, little cleaner. And you can see as we're getting at a higher geometry, smooth that out you can see as we're getting at a higher geometry when I do certain things for detail they don't they don't run well like they don't look well that's just because of the topology that we have right now uh, so when you dynamesh thing not dynamesh excuse me uh, dyno topology things they they tend to look bad when you go into you know these close details and stuff because the topology is all over the place now you don't we don't have technically good topology because it's creating just these random polygons and that's in the beginning of the video I was telling you guys about um, using the multi-res modifier in this scenario what we would do is we would retopologize this mesh that we have here and we would take the multi-res modifier and then we would use that and we can create maybe skin pores and stuff like that on this guy um, to make it look nicer Pushing all this in now. I need to emphasize the brow bone. So that's why I'm pushing these in. We kind of lost that sense. We don't want it too much. You know, we don't want the brow bone to be like too pronounced because then it starts looking like a cartoon character when it's like overly pronounced, like it's going over his entire eye like by a lot. But we want it enough to where um, he looks like a manly man, I guess. And the brow bone, the neck, these are all things that that help a lot with you know making your man look masculine. You're trying to create a a you know maybe like a hero character or main character. And you want him to be a very masculine type of character. Um, creating like strong brow brow bones and you know. Uh, like a very maybe like a very uh clean jaw like this would be helpful we just defined his jaw just like that smooth that out okay so you can tell that makes him just a lot more manlier than and just normal and if you want him to be you know maybe more of a sympathetic wimpy kind of guy then yeah by all means you can you can make his brow bones like less pronounced you can maybe make his face a little poofier make his chin very weak uh, make his eyes like farther apart like things like that um, you can do create a better better style character for you and characters tend to look weird until you put their eyebrows in you would probably do that with a texture you tend to want to do it with a texture but just in this scenario um, can use it with the mask uh, button, the mask brush, not the mask button. Um, we'll do Control I, and then we'll use the clay strips, and we will we'll start building up the eyebrow. We'll see how this looks when we build it up like this. I'm gonna turn on Dino topology right now, just because we I need a little more topology to create that. That eyebrow look. My blender is dying right now. It's not real. <laughs> it's crashing. So, okay, cool. Didn't die on me yet. It will though. I feel like it. Now, when you are working with uh, geometry this high, it tends to die very. Uh, I mean, it tends to freeze a lot this quickly. This ZBrush, Mudbog, they all tend to freeze. They work as a unit. 
and they all freeze together. Okay. Man, this is very laggy in my real time rendering. Very, very laggy in my real time rendering. Okay. Probably just leave it at that just so I don't crash anything. I'll turn off dino topology because I don't think we need it. It's probably not going to respond. Uh, okay, it actually did respond. Awesome. So you have limitations when you're working with this. You can kind of know what you can and you can't do technically, essentially. Out. I don't want to play with it too much just because I don't want to uh, mess with the dino topology and mess it all up. I'm going to leave it as this. It's a subtle brow bone. In hindsight, I'd probably bring these back. I'd probably bring this eyebrow back a little. Let me see if I could just, uh, if I could just sculpt this down backwards, or I would use a. I guess that worked. Didn't work perfectly, but I guess. Oh, this is a rotate. Excuse me. This is a crease brush. Okay, let's move that out. Awesome. Start filling this in. All I'm doing is I'm, now I'm face planting him. Uh, you know, characters has, have planes on their face and you, you tend to, to uh, bring them out like around his eye. We'll bring out this plane around his cheek going into his nose. We'll bring out this plane on the side of his head. You typically want to bring out that plane right there. Smooth it in front of his head. Slightly bring out the plane around his jaw to his ear. Basically, you're just bringing out these planes. I'm just doing this for a nice reference for his face because like I was saying the face is the face is very important and I'm using the scrape brush on the uh, on the flat curve to do all this kind of curved off his jaw do it with his chest I'm using the scrape brush Okay, awesome. Just finalizing him, just cleaning up certain parts. So, if I was working on him, say, as a piece for like a client or myself, like, like if I was creating a game and I wanted to maybe have him be the main character or something, um, the steps I would take after, you know, you know, creating his face and making him look like uh, however I need him to look. The steps I would probably take after is probably creating um, is creating the third set of details. So we did the first set, which was um, I'm gonna take these eyebrows off a little. We did the first set of details which was the, the beginning part where we made the, the top of his um, body and the lower side of his body with his head and we just sculpted out um, base details we did that and then we um, we took that and then we went off and we created the second set of details which is what we're doing now essentially we're creating another set of details um, and then after this I would probably maybe retopologize him and put a multi-res modifier on him if I'm working within blender 
and I would create the third set of details. So we had our first, we had our second, the third set would be like the, the, the very finite things, the things that the things that you have to, you know, go into with the, you know, the most absolute precision to kind of do. I would I would do those things at the end. You know, like skin pores and, you know, bags under his eyes and if he's an older character like wrinkles and stuff like that like those are the things I would I would wait uh, to do maybe like in his ear all the like um, things that go into it like his ear is a very 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 sensitive spot to work on and you know something that you got to definitely put in time and you can't just do his ear very quickly same with his eyelid the lid of his eyes, I would definitely take, you know, a lot of time to kind of do that. And as I'm doing these, I'm, I'm, I'll be making corrections. So I'm using the crease brush. I'm using the same brushes as I go over and over again. Smoothing out and creating the brush as I do over and over again and like I said before I'd probably use a scrape brush and I'd flatten out this lid just like so not too much though I'll scale that down just because I don't want it to get ridiculous and I'll flatten out towards the edge too like that okay same with the bottom lid I'm gonna use a scrape to flatten out the bottom lid now and we'll get something that looks like that so now we have a general clean eyelid And we will also be creating a fabric in the next video. We'll be creating some sort of cloth to show you how to kind of sculpt um, some sort of clothes, which is very important. Uh, even though Marvelous Designer is a thing now, it's very important to kind of know how to, to, to sculpt um, some sort of like wrinkles and clothes just because um, uh, the error for mistake on those things are so high that if you mess up something, it's so organic looking that you'll feel the mess up if you mess up something on like fabric or something. Even with a, a character, like a human character, if you if you make like his chest too big, it's like instantly noticeable. Like it's not hard to find. And that's why I think um, sculpting fabric and obviously sculpting characters are such good practice for sculpting because okay you can see over here his butt vanished so that's what I mean by going back and forth and kind of revising what we did let me just see how we're doing on time we're doing pretty good and revising what we did over and over again so now I'm gonna start sculpting in his butt a little bit better And like I said, his butt is not made to be seen. That's not like why you sculpt it. You sculpt it for his silhouette, how it's going to look in pants and stuff like that. How it's going to fit him. You know, a person's glutes are, are very crucial to like how they perform. Okay. Just shallow off his abs. We're getting to that point where it's, it's getting... It's getting almost to the part where we're gonna do the final details you know as a very rough thing like I would have took uh, probably a little bit longer on this mesh if I was working on it by myself uh, just because you know I would create hair I would create you know probably an outfit and things like that so it wouldn't just be like a base body but for a body I would probably uh, yeah, I would probably go in and, and just refine some details. I, I'm not really a big fan on creating 
any sort of skin pores or stuff like that just because um, hyper realism isn't my um, set I like I like creating um, semi realistic characters uh, but hyper realism like photo realistic characters this isn't my forte um, I don't really go too much into it but um, you know maybe in the future I would create so I wouldn't I'm not necessarily a kind of guy who I would create like skin pores on a character I like more overwatch and um, like more stylized kind of looking games but at the same time they make sure realism is is present in those games which is really cool it's my more of my forte I guess when it comes to gaming and style and we're just finishing this guy up using you can just see by the brushes I'm, I'm switching to and, and off putting like this is the same same thing over and over again I've went over the same kind of thing over and over again and that's why we're wrapping this character up at this point you know you know we're just smoothing out his chest scraping things in pushing things out I'll probably scrape his glutes in now and all in all probably call it right here around here you know just keep on getting and then, like you can spend hours on this stuff guys like like there is no there's no time limit to it uh, when you're doing it by yourself me there's technically a time limit uh, but when you're doing it by yourself there's no time limit so and you don't have to be afraid to fail I'm live I can't fail like I can't mess up and, and be like oh this didn't work I have a schedule and what how to make things and what to make them with I, I don't really experiment if I'm making a video like this you guys by all means you can experiment a lot with your character like uh, like changing the face like let me save this just so I can show you like what I would realistically do like I would definitely play with this character's face like I would definitely be like all right is his jaw on the points of his jaw right here if I make them wider right and I pull it down and push it back I pull down his jaw is it gonna make him look cooler is it make him if I widen his top of his head like that will it make him look better if I push this up if I you know bring his chin down and push it out a little you know will it make him look a little bit cooler and do stuff like that and I would I would test so many things so many things if I'm actually you know you know doing it for my game or something I would I would be revising and, and doing so many different things because I never know what 100% looks the best all the time uh, you want to create your character with a neutral look, but you, you definitely want to move his face around. Like you don't want his lips to have like an expression, like being smiling. But you want to move how his face looks, like the width and the thickness, things like that. Where his chin is, if he has a predominant chin, I would definitely play with his nose to see maybe like if he had a different nose, would he look cooler? I would definitely play with his brow bone also. And obviously, I'm not going to give you this mesh, the one that I'm, I'm, I'm playing with. I'm going to give you the one before this, the, the one that we've just finished. But um, just like that, you can tell, like, we, we, we changed the mesh up so much. You know, maybe shrink his ears, make them a little bit smaller. And then just... Um, revise and revise and revise and that's what I would typically do in my workflow um, if I'm not creating if I'm not teaching like how to use brushes and how to you know go about sculpting anatomy and stuff I would definitely create um, maybe move his biceps in and push his lats in maybe go for a more skinnier approach I would also do like be pushing his shoulders in and such to see how it would look you, sometimes you just need to see how visually it would look just to see you know just moving his arms in to make them a little bit smaller pushing the tricep in now if you have a if you have a um, reference if you have a reference model on hand 
um, on you, then yeah, of course you don't want to you don't want to revise like this. You don't you can't like concept because you have something that you have to stay strict to. But if you don't, if you if you are creating your own game or your own asset, and you want to create like a certain style or a certain way, maybe you found the picture that inspired you. Obviously, you can't copy it 100%. But if you have a picture of Ansari's and you want to play with the style a little, like, yeah, like maybe make his nose wide and big to make him predominant. A lot of Disney movies do that. A lot of Disney movies make um, the character's nose really big and wide, and it makes them look dominant with a, like, very harsh chin bone, too. So they bring their chins down like this. And they have a very harsh chin bone like that. Okay, I'll probably pull his face out just a tad bit. Now, obviously, Disney probably doesn't do it like this, <laughs> like how I'm doing, but along the lines of this, and the, you can see how the style starts changing a lot just by changing the nose and the jaw. Like the style starts changing. So, you know, you can maybe do that. Start flattening out his nose, maybe. You do a lot of things, and that's what I would be doing um, if I wasn't necessarily like I was doing it on my own. I would be I would be concepting, concepting, and what that does is allows you to you know temper with different styles. And usually, as an artist, you want you want to find your own rhythm and you want to find your own style. And what that allows you to do is is play with a bunch of different ones, maybe. Maybe big noses is your style, or maybe like long chins or narrow heads. Maybe towards the top of his head is narrow. Maybe that's your style. I don't know why that would be your style, but I don't know. Like you can just play with it, and you have so much flexibility uh, when doing it. And you can tell I, I I made this guy look so much different. You know, I could probably move his chest out to make it look more manly. I made this guy look so much different in a matter of minutes. Now, if you take like a day or two to, to improvise a couple different, um, a couple different characters, you would have, you know, so much knowledge on it. And while you're doing it, um, you're moving things around. You already have this great base. You're moving things around, and you can kind of gauge what looks good and what doesn't. You know, so we took like a we took like a realistic character, semi-realistic, and we made him more stylized now you know the only thing that's left is probably to widen his eyes a lot you know to make him look like more cartoony styled if that's the style you're going for so we did that we did that very fast too it didn't take too long it wasn't like a big process but the fact that we started off with a base um, we started off with a base and then we we built off that base was was the big thing you know we wouldn't be able to get this obviously if we didn't start off with that base it wouldn't be that easy to to you know go about modeling something like this without like a good solid foundation widen up his jaw like this and it's typically like um, See if I let's see if I open another file. Let's see if it opens my existing old one. Absolutely not. Let me see if Okay, that's not it. Um Okay, so I think this is the old character. I think this is a new one. So my my message, I mean my desktop is all over the place. So this is the new character. This is the older character, the one that we we originally had and we detailed. And this is something. Let's delete this. This is the old old one. And this is something we created in a matter of minutes. After you can tell. Um, right off the bat, they look so different, you know, so different, and you can tell this one's a totally different looking guy, and maybe this guy could fit your style uh, more than the other guy. Maybe this guy gives you a more masculine feel. 
uh, with his jaw and everything, you know, the predominant chin, the long jaw, the broader nose with the bigger bridge, and the eyebrows that are kind of going um, above like that. I mean, definitely gives a more masculine look. And then you can make a more feminine look. You can make, you know, a character look more like um, softer and like, you know, more of a pretty boy and stuff like that. So um, playing around just with uh, concepting will help you guys a lot, a lot in the long run. Um, in the next session, we're actually going to be covering cloth and fabric, which should be fun. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Steven Davidian, and I hope you guys... Hey there, guys. My name is Steven Davidian, and today we're going to be actually sculpting clothes, something a little bit more organic than just like the human body. Uh, some Something that's different, which is like clothes. So let's get right into it. I'm going to take this base mesh. And we're going to select everything that, you know, we want on our clothes. So obviously let's select up to there, right? And then probably I would say right there. Okay, and finish those off. And we could, let me just see if everything's clean. We could duplicate this, hit spacebar and separate it by selection. And we can hide that mesh. So now we have a nice clean shirt, you know, that we can use to create different kind of things. And we can extrude it outwards just a little bit to create some thickness inside. Okay, so now let's get into sculpting. Enough is enough. Let's turn on dyno topology. And how I'd like to sculpt clothes is first, the first thing we gotta do is we gotta, gotta start, you know, putting in some detail. You know, not detail, but uh, geometry, I'm sorry. I'm gonna start putting in some geometry into the mesh. So I'm gonna go over with the clay uh, ship's brush and put in geometry all here. I'll round out these delts, put them into the geometry. Now, you don't want to have any sort of muscle variation uh, when you're modeling clothes. So let me pull out my clothes. Um, give me one second. You don't want to have any sort of like muscle separation, biceps, you know, popping. Well, in this case, his biceps aren't getting covered. But any sort of like muscular like definition within your clothes. You want to keep it very um, simple. Uh, just focus on folds. I'm going to stretch this out a little, create a more organic shape. I was a little too tight towards the bottom. So more organic folds, you know. You don't want to go into creating these detailed, um, these detailed sculpts through the, um, through the clothes, and you can see like his chest and biceps and the separation and such. This is another thing where looking at reference would help a lot, you know. Maybe even standing up and taking a picture of your own clothes would help you a lot, honestly. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start lining out. I'm gonna take symmetry off because I don't want my clothes to be symmetrical, obviously. So let's take X symmetry off. So now whatever I do over here, it's not gonna be done over there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start lining off where creases would be. Okay, so let's take the sculpt draw brush and since for this tutorial sake, we'll make it more of a creased heavy shirt, you know. Towards the chest, we're gonna start, um, we're gonna start creating, well, let's create a line right here first. Let's create a line, so that's where kind of our seam would be, right here. So th that means this is where things will start uh, from our fold. So it'd be right here, and then let's create a smaller brush size. It's gonna come around our arm, and our other seam would be right around here. Oh, well, there's no symmetry on right now. So I'm only doing this on one side, but that's totally fine, because all I have to do is do symmetrize. Oh, wrong side, wrong side. There we go, okay. So 
So I fixed it and I did it on the other side. So these are our seams right here. So this is where we can pull off um, how the clothes will fall. So let's smooth all this out. And I would say we gotta bring this down to around seven to start off. And for the back of the shirt, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out. So right here, let's pull out very subtly, you know, let's say a crease that comes off like this. All right, and then you can maybe pull inwards, a crease to kind of, to kind of push this uh, protrusion outwards. Okay, now if we go out, we look at it from a different light, we can see it's very harsh, right? And that's not what we want. We, we want it to be smooth, we want it to be essentially a fold, like something that looks like it's falling, uh, toppling over. So we're gonna just start creating more. You know, go upwards with it and then we'll come down. And what I do here is I, I, I create a variety of, of different like, create a hole back here. I create a variety of different kind of styles and I kind of wait till I get one that I essentially like a lot. So right here I'm gonna create a seam that comes all the way around the edge of the shirt, kind of like this. Okay. And you can have it probably come like that. And then, you know, we can push this side in. And I'm doing this very roughly, you know. It's like if you come out and you look at this, it's like, whoa, what is that sticking out of shirt? But like I said, we're going to come in and we're going to smooth this stuff out and get it to look a bit nicer than how it looks now. Towards the front, we'll probably have some creases coming upwards. So what I mean by that is we'll have creases probably coming up towards probably the, the chest line. Probably smooth that out. I'll probably bring them even lower. So creases coming up just like that. And an, a tool that would be good for this, you know, that kind of eliminates you doing this is actually Marmoset. I mean, not Marmoset, Marvelous Designer. Uh, Marmoset's a rendering software. I don't know why I said that. So what Marvelous Designer allows you to do is it allows you to create, I'm gonna bring the dino topology down a lot and create some more um, faces. Or, uh, Marvelous Designer allows you to do is it lets you to create clothes um, very, very easily and very, very quickly. Like if you're working in any sort of production, you're not gonna be using ZBrush typically to make your clothes just because it's so much quicker to make it with Marvelous Designer. Um, this is more of like the olden way to do it, I would say, uh, with creating it uh, by hand and sculpting. Right now I'm just adding detail, by the way. That's why I'm just like going right over it. And since symmetry is not on, it's making my work double. And I don't want to turn symmetry on because this, this groundwork that we already laid out is there. So that's why I'm kind of just going over it very quickly very roughly you know to make it look a little bit nicer you can see now I'm starting to smooth these things out so I'll come over here since we have a little more geometry and I smooth them out and I, I bring them out you can start to see it a little bit better you know we got to narrow this out and another nice tool for this also so right now I'm just using I use the sculpt draw and we're using the uh, clay strips, but another nice tool is actually using the, I'm gonna bring this down a little bit more to around five, because we are working with folds and things like that. But another nice tool is actually um, the crease brush, um, creating these, these nice edges, and it makes it like topple over. It's very, very good for folds and stuff like that. Any kind of like fabric or cloth, the crease brush is very, very good for that. Kind of just splits it perfectly. Right now I'm just creating geometry where I feel like I'm gonna need to put these creases in. It's because when you are working with folds and things like that, <clears throat> excuse me, 
when you are working with folds and things like that, you need the geometry there just because they're there are these small cuts within fabric that are folding on top of each other. That's like relative detail right there. I mean, that's a lot of detail that you have to have to be able to pull that off. So that's why I'm just right now, you can see that I'm just, I'm not really focusing on too much right now. I'm just focusing on, on geometry. I'm just building up with the clay strips brush. Uh, where I know uh, that I'm gonna have this geometry and, and this is something after I build up I'll show you I'm gonna switch the shaders which we haven't all day um, all well all session we haven't switched up the shaders so this is something I'm gonna show you like we're gonna instead of using the flat shader which is what we're doing now we're gonna switch it up to a smooth and it's gonna help a lot Especially when you're working with like finite things like creating a fold, you know, having a smooth shaded mesh It's obviously going to be nicer than having a flat shaded mesh. Now, I'm not too worried about the top of this. I can clean this up later That's why I'm just going over and smoothing around it Okay Should be about about done now I don't think there's that much more detail to put in. I think it's pretty detailed out. Okay, so we lost a little bit. So we see this crease right here. Let's take the crease brush. You can see this one we created right here. Okay, and you can you can fade it out by smoothing it, and then you can use Control to push it outwards like that. You can fade it. So we have that crease right there. Now underneath here we'll create another baggage like that. Okay, and then we'll smooth that out and then create we'll create that crease that falls. Now we want another piece though. So this is this is the piece right here that's falling, right? So you know if we if we push out and add a little more geometry to make it look a little cleaner. And let's go to like I was saying, let's go to smooth shaded. See, so it looks a lot nicer. You know, you can tell how your creases are gonna look. Okay, so this is a fold that's coming down. Now I'll probably probably curl out a little more too. Now I'll smooth that out. Okay, we want an additional fold that that kind of uh, doesn't follow it, but that kind of underlies it, like this. You know, we want some baggage down at the bottom. Probably meet it up around here. Okay, and we're starting to smooth out. And what this smooth shading is allowing us to do is we're seeing how the model is gonna typically look when we're done. So now I use control on my crease brush to crease out um, to create that nice tip and then, you know, I'll create a nice crease. And then you can, you know, go off and create maybe different lines and edges and then smooth that out just like that. And then you don't want to make them too defined. Over here, I'm drawing these creases that are kind of folding down like this, but I'm, I'm smoothing it out immediately. So right after I do it, uh, I'm going out and I'm smoothing it because I, I don't want these creases to be due to too defined whatsoever. I want them to look very like small and finite. Okay, so same with these shirts, smooth that. Okay, so you can see down here we have a nice little baggage that's coming down, you know. You can come down, control, and then start softening these two. Okay, and then for here we'll probably create maybe a couple of small creases like I'll even show you like something. Let's lower the size because we want this to be, um, want these to be sharp. So maybe a couple that are just like, like that. Okay. I know that looks bad right now, but we're gonna use a crease brush. So on the right side, we're gonna crease everything like that, smooth it, and then on the left side, we're gonna use the control. We're gonna pull it out. And now that's harsh. You can see that's very, very harsh. And we want these to look like they're they're just stretched creases, you know? 
because he's wearing the shirt. Maybe he's like a bigger guy. So we're going to smooth them out and we're going to refine. Smooth it out and then refine. Smooth that out and refine. Smooth out the edges so it doesn't look like it's, it's pulling on it. Okay. Same with here. Come down. A little smooth. Now you can see I could create a lot of different shapes just with the smooth. Another shape you can probably create, one of those harsher folds. So this is not something I would do. But, you know, I can use a sculpt draw brush. Use that a smaller size. And create a fold maybe that goes down like this. And we'll change it to clay strips. And we'll build this fold up now since we already created it. Build this up. And now... This edge that's going to be sticking out is going to be a sharp edge. Now we're going to we're going to follow this fold with another fold, just like we did on this back side. But we're doing it in a different manner. Let's create that edge with the crease brush. So it's prevalent. And now we're going to follow this with with no basically almost no edge. You just want it to be a fold that it's following. Kind of like this. And it can almost wrap around and you can smooth this all out. You can use a grab brush to like pull these down to make it a little more faded. Just like that. What you could do to kind of make a gap too, you can push these out. Create maybe like a gap almost. And this takes a lot of work. Like, uh, it really depends on the material you're using. You know, if you're using more of a, if you're using more of a, say, looser material, you would see obviously the chest a little more. It'd be a little more prevalent. Uh, not perfectly on both ways, but you know, you would see maybe like pieces of the chest. That's what I'm trying to like kind of emphasize right now, but very faintly. Same with the collarbone. You probably see little pieces of the collarbone, just like that. But you would f you would smooth it out just like so. Okay. We're just gonna continue creating, creating these folds. So you can see, this is almost all with the crease brush. We're just doing all of the same tactics. Uh, we're reusing essentially the same tactics over and over and over again with the crease brush. We're creating creases and we stop. And these aren't harsh creases. These aren't creases that are like, these aren't harsh folds. These aren't harsh creases. These are just things that are subtle, you know, to put on like a character. Um, you always want it to fold out just like that. You don't want to have typically a crease that's just going straight up and it's a crease. Like, you don't want this as a crease. It just doesn't look nice. You want it to look like it's falling almost. Because a piece of fabric that's, that's falling down. And you can use this crease brush in culmination with the grab brush. Kind of stretch these values out a little. Give them a better curve too, just like so. Okay. Smooth all this. For, for the basics, this is starting to look, you can starting to, if you move around, you start to see um, a couple better curves here. Smooth that out. Now I'm gonna probably probably smooth this bottom part out, right? I'll take all of that out. And I'll probably I'm not gonna copy this what we did on the right side, but I'm gonna create a pattern 
um, kind of similar to this on the left side. So what I'll do is you know, I'll start off by creating with the clay strips. And I'll create my pattern. Now a lot of people have different ways. Some people use a sculpt draw and do solid strokes like that and you know refine them. A lot of people have different ways of doing it. This is generally the way I like to do it. I like to do it more like I do everything kind of rough, you know. And and I keep refining. I I, I start off very messy and very rough, but I always refine. Come here and I'll start now. I'll use control under underneath of it. And I'll smooth and use control to push down to create a bag. You know, I'll smooth. I'll also use a crease to sharpen that a little. Okay, as I'm creating this bag though, using control to create the bag, you can already see I'm creating another one. So you can already see right here that this other bag is getting created. So Gonna ride this up, and then now we could just do the same thing. Like it's almost identical. You know, we could smooth that out, and then same thing. We could smooth this and create that bag. And if you want to move it in maybe different places, make it look different, you can by all means. But like I said, uh, I, I typically use Marvelous uh, to do my clothes. I haven't really sculpted clothes in like a long kind of time. Um, but like for, for, for a beginner standpoint, sculpting clothes helps a lot because it, it is a lot of like referencing. You have to look back and forth, back and forth. And it's very, very organic looking. So... Uh, if you if you if you force something it's gonna look very off-putting if you force something to make it look good and that's why it's nice to practice on you don't want anything to be harsh you can see I'm starting to smooth out those lines I created in the beginning to kind of guide me I'm starting to smooth those lines out You don't want things to be harsh. You don't want things to look weird. Okay. Awesome. So it's looking pretty good right now. Uh, you could define the chest if you want. You could define it, like pop it out a little. And then you can kind of create a crease. So. Let's define this just a little bit. So if we use a crease tool to you know, straighten out this edge, look directly at this. You know, this is where symmetry kind of becomes a problem, not having it on. Can't really tell if you're doing the right thing all the time. And then you can create you know, creases coming down from the edge, uh, from here, from the chest. You know, if you have a loose fabric, you can create a crease maybe, maybe like creasing off here. It goes a little above the chest and then you can smooth that out and you can just do the same thing. So you smooth it out, use the crease brush to crease out and then you come here and you can do another one. You now you can crease out and come here. Just putting some seams right here, roughly. Okay. Let's use a scrape brush now, and we're gonna go in and start making this a little more stylized. So with the scrape brush, we could go in and we can start flattening these out like such. Start actually making this feel a little bit nicer. You got to be really careful because like I was mentioning with the scrape brush that this could decimate your mesh. This can really mess up your mesh. So when you are creating, be careful. 
I wouldn't say to specialize, like don't go in in full depth on, you know, we're not worried about this over here. Don't go in on full depth on learning how to create um, shirts and such. Uh, just because this is more of a, uh, typically an absolute field. But I'm just showing you just for the fact that, um, you know, you definitely have to pay attention when you're creating uh, these organically. And it, it's, it's very hard. It's, it's very hard to create. Um, organic shapes like this you know it, get, it gets frustrating almost to a point just because you know you do mess up on something you do you know make let's just say hypothetically um i know a lot of people would make creases like coming down the shoulders like this you know like you make something like this and you try to like you know and you come out, you could just feel that it, it doesn't belong there. And it just, it punishes you. The, the, the fact that this being an organic model and it having to like look like it's falling uh, nicely, it punishes you if you don't do it. So, um, control Z that. So that's the one thing I, I kind of feel like you can get a learning. And I, by no means am I saying, uh, I am like an expert at clothes modeling. That's not my 100% forte, but I'm showing you how you can go around the basics of creating clothes from, you know, I was gonna say ZBrush, Blender um, brushes. Okay, I'm just trying to finish this off right here. Just control Z all of this. Okay. Go to the clay strips brush. You just smooth all that out. What you could do also is you can use a sculpt draw brush. Now we can turn symmetry on. Uh, we're we're going to kind of get rid of the folds now. And now what we could do is create these seams in the arms. Where his arms are, we can create these seams. Let's try to lower this a little less. So this being symmetric, yeah, it's symmetrical. Might not be perfectly symmetrical though. So we might have to take a look at it. But you can just follow this seam. And if you have a brush that maybe has stitching uh, by, by an alpha, you can use that to kind of stitch your way along, which, which will give a really cool effect. I'm coming down the side of this mesh and creating a, a kind of seam right here. Okay. It's very rough looking. Doesn't look like a nice seam by any means. I'm going to come down. I'm going to show you how we're going to make it look a little nicer than how it looks now. You can tell on this side it doesn't look too hot at all. So I'm going to turn off symmetry and I'm going to fix this on this side now. So symmetry doesn't work perfectly when, you know, this, mo this mesh over here is not perfectly symmetrical to this mesh. You, know, you have different values. So sometimes it messes up. You just got to go in and correct it. You don't want to hit symmetry here though. Because if you do hit symmetry over here, whatever is on this side will go to that side. And... When you're creating a shirt, you don't typically want it to be 100% symmetrical on both sides. Just because that's not how it would look in real life. So now we're gonna go over this. We're gonna do two steps. Well, three technically. So the first step was creating the seam uh, between the clothes or the line. You know, it doesn't have to be typically a seam. You create the line between the clothes where, where the seam would be, right? Where your your shirt is technically sewed, because every shirt is sewed at some somewhere, you know, together. So you create that line with the sculpt draw. Then you use the crease brush. Then you use the pinch brush. Now, and I'm gonna show you why why this is brush is so nice. It's gonna actually make this so nice and straight. Straightens it out, and makes it so crisp. Gives you the crispest lines. 
Okay, and you just follow this, and you can see if you zoom out, you can see how crisp these lines are. For some objects, some hard surface modeling, um, I've, I can take maybe hours upon hours creating these um, crisp lines with the pinch brush. You know, come over and you just create it like so. It's really nice. And then when you zoom out, it gives you this nice effect. You know, look at this side, ugly. This side, crisp and nice. It feels like it belongs. And you could create another seam going to his neck. But I'm going to probably, just for you guys to have it, I'll probably create, um, probably create it on this side too. Because I don't want you to have a high poly shirt that doesn't really have anything on it. That only has it on one side and not the other. Okay, so use a crease brush. You can even line it off with the crease brush. You can kind of skip the sculpt draw brush step. And like over here, you can see you can line it off with the crease. But the only thing is it pushes outwards. But when you use a pinch brush, it brings those uh, points together. So that's fine. But I use a sculpt brush just to ensure that uh, where I'm getting is it's kind of like a guideline. I use it as a guideline almost. Go over here, I'm gonna pinch all this together. Keep it a nice crisp line. And we've used each tool in its creating certain things. We've used the pinch tool right now in this situation, the crease tool to kind of push out certain things as such. Um, we've used the scrape tool. Uh, in both this project and the previous one so like you know to push out maybe this side of the chest right here and same with this side use a scrape tool to do that and you know maybe clean this up we've used all of these tools in you know each of their manners and you've seen their effects so clay strips is usually the build up tool we usually build up with this tool and um, let's turn this that up We usually build up with the clay strips. I don't usually use a standard brush. You can tell we didn't use it that much, but we did in certain situations when creating when creating this character. Okay, let's go into him. When creating him, we use the standard on his eyes to get in his eye shape. We use the standard, um, I think to create, uh, create some thickness, to cut in some shapes in his biceps and stuff like that. Um, we use it in a lot of different kind of ways. Let me save this. So. Hold on. This blender sometimes when it has, you know, a bunch of polygons to take care of when you have a bunch of polygons within the scene sometimes it tends to start jittering and bugging out uh, you can see up here it's not responding so and that is another reason why you generally want to stay lower poly remember how I was telling you like everything's a hassle when you don't build up in the beginning when if you just go into straight detail that's why I generally stay lower poly I just save the detail for the absolute end Right now, this is probably the last bag I'm going to create. Gonna create a bag, an, in, an indent right here, right? And I'll have, have it come out like right there. So it'll be kind of like a, kind of like it's bagging over each other. And I'll use a crease brush to kind of see how it looks. Definitely don't want it to be harsh, for sure. Splitting these up, just like that. And then same on this side, I'll split them up. Just like so. 
And now I'll use a grab brush to start moving these around. Now this indent right here is a bit too much, so you can see I'm going to start smoothing this out. Smoothing it out on the side, and I'll create one more, with, just with the crease brush, one more bag right underneath this one, and follow it like that. I'm going to start emphasizing these creases too. I can even start pushing them out more emphasize this crease and you could kind of get lost but like I said unfortunately marvelous designer it does this automated for you that was, that's the only thing that kind of um, killed this kind of job of sculpting um, clothes is because it did it automated already for you and it's like you have no need to uh, do it it's just not worth it because you have something that can do it for you like in seconds then you can tweak and adjust, of course, but you know it's hard to beat something that you're going to be doing in like seconds. It's hard to do that. So, and let's just finish this off really quick. Just cut, putting a couple more creases in here. And see, we're doing this. We're doing the same action. Um, Kind of like what we were doing with the human, how we were just like uh, using one brush and creating different kind of geometry with that one brush. We're doing the same thing here. Uh, we're using one kind of style, you know, creating folds and such with this style. You know, creating these edges with the crease brush and then come over here, create more edges and then smooth them out. Once you get the repetition, it's it's really easy to do. Like I said, and you get the right creases also, like uh, through reference, you can make it look really cool. If you just don't want to, I think Marvelous Designer is pretty expensive, so if you don't want to pay for something like that, um, sculpting your own assets for like fabric, material, clothes, like that stuff. It'll save you a dime and it'll get you better too in the long run, just sculpting in general because you just have a better eye for it. The more you sculpt, the better you're obviously going to get. You're not going to get worse by sculpting. You know. Just a tip I would give is just one, obviously, stay consistent without a doubt and two um, you be, have an eye for for what's good and what's not you know uh, when I'm creating work I don't say this isn't good or this isn't the best just because I'm putting myself down no I genuinely mean like this shirt by no means this shirt is is, is, a, is a good shirt like a quality standard shirt it's a very good explanation on how to create you know the basics of a shirt but to create a quality shirt would take a long time you know it wouldn't take 40 50 minutes to create a quality shirt uh, same with the character there when I created this character when I created this character I was like um, he's not the best looking base model in the world by all means like I didn't do his fingers I didn't do his feet look at his feet his legs uh, could use work oh. I can recognize I'm not putting myself down I can recognize what is good work and what isn't I'm not saying this is bad work I'm just saying it's not top tier this is not perfection I wouldn't say call this a master so that that is probably one of the biggest tips I would give is being able to eye out good work and it's hard to t say to yourself like hey this isn't good that's hard I understand but um, it will help you tremendously in the wrong, long run if you can look at yourself and say, hey, like this isn't, this isn't the best of my ability. I, c I can do better. Or you can, you can kind of level out what, what is wrong with it. Like what could you do better about it? That is the most important thing uh, to know is, is um, if you can do better at something, just what is it? And that is where I feel like people have the most problem is detecting what they can't 
what they they know something's wrong but they can't find out what it is and if you can find out what that problem is um, fixing it is not an issue you know you, there's gonna be trial and error but you you'll get over it you're not gonna die trying to fix the problem but if you can detect it it's that will make you a very, very great artist. And I think every artist is currently working on, you know... All the good ones definitely know what's up, you know? They're not worried about... They have an eye for it. All the good artists, for sure. But to become one of those artists, yeah, you have to learn on how, how to create, you know... How to create good art and how to recognize good art. So... That would be one tip I would leave you guys with, I guess. Since this is the best practices, you're seeing me practice um, on this. And you can see, kind of pick my mind on, you know. Well, that's basically it for this tutorial series. I hope you guys learned something while watching this. Thank you guys if you did watch through the whole thing. I had a lot of fun creating this series, actually. And maybe in the future, I'll create similar series on a more in-depth level. Um, like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. My